Welcome back to Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever recorded. And something is rotten in the state of Denmark, and Hamlet's taking out the trash. Last action hero. How about we smash the trope button right off the bat now, one time, and assume it's on the entire episode? I yeah, agree. That's a giant real. choke button. We could do it. And that just goes through the <laughs> entire movie. It's for the whole that, movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's the tropiest of all tropey <laughs> movies. Yeah, intentionally. Intentionally, yes. Yes. correct. This I, is a good thing. But this, this is, is, yeah. This is our first revisit back to something like this since the debacle that was Spy Hard, but this is way better. Well, were you here for Johnny Dangerously? I did not get to be here for yeah. Games. So that was also so that's actually the last yeah, spoof. That's one true. We did. Another yeah, but I think. Uh, but also a well done spoof. Right? Yes, compared to true. Yes, the atrocity true, for sure. that was Spy Hard. I thought you liked that one. I thought I liked it at first, <laughs> but then it was one of those when <laughs> I revisited it. I said, mm, "This is really bad." We're, spir- <laughs> we're spiraling, but we're. You in got agreement. something thrown at you. Yes. You, you gotta, well, yeah. but yes. I'll that always was the say infamous flip flop. <laughs> the flip flop. At least episode. Spy Hard gave us uh, the trash can full of dirt award. That's true. There was some good. There was a silver lining in That's that right. trash can. For sure. For sure. Well, welcome in, Kurt. How are you this morning, sir? I'm good, sir. Yeah. How are you? Very colorful today. Thank you. I wore the Hawaiian yeah. shirt today. Got summer vibes going. Well, yeah. I figured with the heat wave today, I figured, oh man, yeah, it's, I'm gonna. Get Is there a heat wave today? today Apparently, tomorrow. it's supposed to yeah. be today and tomorrow. It's like 90. Oh, geez, Louise. Yeah. How are you, Bob? I'm doing great, man. How are you? What does your shirt say? I can't read it. Sorry, I can't have plans. Sorry. I, I can't. I have plans with my couch. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. That's how. fantastic from a furniture mover. You, that's, a great, <laughs> that's a great advertising. That's why my wife bought it for me. Oh, that's She's perfect. Like, this, this says you all over the place. I go, okay, cool. I'm excited that you guys are here, and Clint Bush also is here in the house today. I'm excited you're here. I dressed up like Kool-Aid. You did? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the giant red T-shirt. I like that. Yeah. Give me a brick wall. It's nice and <laughs> it's nice and bright. We're going to have him run through the wall later. Yes. That'll be our bonus Patreon episode. We'll have Clint just try and get through this wall. It's like I got to fight a seal, and I got to run through a wall that's so far. What I'm saying, buddy. Like, like the Bonneville and Last Action Hero? Or yeah. like dude. <laughs> oh. The car. What you, what car goes through a wall? The his car, the Slater's car, Bonneville. literally just drives through everything. Okay, right. I thought you were talking. The only thing I can remember coming through the wall was the truck. Yeah, yeah but every oh, car yeah. that he the photo shoot with <laughs> the, the photo uh, shoot. every car that he owns just goes through everything. The gratuitous okay. butt shot for the women running through. That's a bu- that, that was the Bonneville, shoot. wasn't it? No, that was the that was that the red pickup truck, the red classic pickup truck that the uh, fifty that, the fifty six F one hundred. Okay, well we'll we'll talk about that. We'll figure it out. Uh, because honestly, until unless I go through it in order, I'm I'm gonna get lost. No problem. Sure. It's all right. Sorry. That's okay. Well, welcome in to Clint and Kurt and Bob and welcome in to you. Happy that you guys are here too. Uh, excited to hear what you guys think of this movie, just in a in a general sense. Uh, what your history with the movie is, if it's something that you've watched a hundred times or just once, or Bob, we'll we'll start with you. Last Action Hero came out in 1994. How old were you? Five years old? Six years old at the time? Five, five or six years old. I yeah. saw it maybe once or twice. I don't know if I saw this with you at the Antioch Theater. Probably not. But I vaguely remember watching it when I was around that age. Okay. Here and there. Got the action figures for the movie. You've got a Jack Slater. I got a Jack Slater. I got a Benedict, and I got the Ripper action figure, all three action <laughs> figures. I got the giant. Uh, you, you got me a couple of years ago, the Jack Slater doll. You got the big giant. I got you the big yeah. Jack Slater. Yeah. yeah, which I have yet to put batteries in to listen to him and see if he still talks. But that's all right. And I didn't re-see the movie, re-watch the movie until I was about 13, 14 with you, like, yeah. like 2001, 2002, when I started. You showed me like, hey, let's watch this movie. It's really cool. I go, all right. And I watched it. I'm like, this movie's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, good. And so did you rewatch it for this, or are you just going I, off your of memory? I did rewatch it yesterday, okay. and I have a new found appreciation for this movie. Okay, great. 
So this movie is ultimately one of my favorite bad movies ever. All right. So Sounds good. It's good stuff. Kurt, how are you with this movie, buddy? So I thought I saw this movie before, <laughs> and I am like, it's a weird, it's a weird position to be in because yeah. I don't know where I've seen this movie, mm-hmm. but I've, I, I like remember it, but I didn't remember all of it. So okay. then watching the movie... Some things were kind of coming back to me. Like, I remember the the, the crazy eye of yeah. the bad guy. Yes. And just certain things. But there, I just, I had to rewatch it. So rewatching it this last couple of weeks, I've watched it a couple of times. Yeah. I, I just, I'm like... I still feel very on the fence about this movie. <laughs> so you're coming in and out of, of consciousness but, almost as yeah, you're watching Yeah, because this. I don't necessarily have a nostalgic yeah. love for the movie, mm-hmm. but I also don't hate the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm kind of on this weird, like, I like it, but, man, there are some parts that I was just like, can we get to the next <laughs> bit? Like, can we just, when is this going to happen? Yeah, you know? I so hear you. It, there, But there was, like, there's a, like, feel like there's a good movie in here. And there is. I, I feel like if it was revisited now, yeah, I think it would be hilarious because I feel like there's more, like the, I wanted to see more comedy in it, mm-hmm. more satire, more, you know, and it was almost like an action movie still with some satire, mm-hmm. more than a satire movie that has some action in it. Yeah, and I think I would have rather seen it as a satire movie with action in it. I hear you. I th- I think. It had to come out when it did. It, it couldn't come out now, but I'll explain that a little bit later. But I get what sure. you're saying. Yeah. Clint, how about you, sir? I watched this movie somewhere out of Blockbuster in the 90s. You know what yeah. I mean? We rented it. We saw it. It wasn't bad. Um, this was one of my rentals, not my dad brought home. Oh, you got to uh, pick your own well, movies? This was late enough to okay. where we could do such things. So <laughs> we had cars and transportation. Right. You know. And flat tops. My own TV. <laughs> With a VCR, Quasar. No. Oh, oh man, there you, you were go. fancy. Quasar. Oh, yeah. Didn't realize you were the, rich. It, it was one of the, <laughs> I was. I, I, when I started getting my paycheck, you know, we got the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good old Quasar. I know I'm going to show my age. What's a Quasar? It was a brand. Was a brand. Oh, it was a kind of VCR, it man. Was, oh. It was the first VCR that I bought at the time. That, okay. Like, if you played the movie and rewound it immediately after playing it without taking it out and putting it back in, it rewound it like a million speed and then slowed down right before the end because it had the length count so it wouldn't, like, right. rip the tape off the reel at the that end. That was your VCR? Yeah. Yeah, like, you if, you, awesome. if you were, like, a regular blue-collar family, you had, like... A Emerson, Emerson, or something, yeah. right? We had the Emerson, but then if you had like the Magnavox a membership at a country club, then you got a Quasar. <laughs> Is that where you got the uh, sports jacket from? <laughs> That's right, and they give you a sports jacket when you buy one. <laughs> Ours had right. stop and play. That was it. <laughs> stop and play. You had you to literally put the VCR through. in, and it right. would run wherever it was at. Mine had like a crank on it, like nice. a winder. <laughs> yeah, so I had to crank the thing. I had the old push button Magnavox. <laughs> you just. <laughs> Play and stop. We did have a top loader for a while. Those oh, were fun, yeah. Right? The, the yeah, top the push loader. Down. The push down. I remember yeah. that one. Yeah. I broke it. Yep, you did. <laughs> it didn't even have a play Back button. In the- just put it down. It started playing. Yeah. And eject. Exactly. Back in the heyday when we were making movies, we yeah. had that uh, video camcorder where we'd actually oh, put a right. full like VHS. VC, yeah, VHS, like right inside right the side of it. the thing. Was that dad's or was that your guys's? Uh, I don't know. I think it was actually mom's dad's it was like grandpa's oh okay yeah and then his cat broke it when it knocked it off the table <laughs> yeah so We're so old we are super old all right Except for Bob. <laughs> so I, I i'll say this obviously i saw it back in the day uh i didn't get it at the time because i just didn't fully appreciate what it was trying to do it was this is one of those movies kind of like Forgetting Sarah Marshall was for me and some other ones where it's like the more I watched it, the more I loved it. And the first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, it was a good movie. Right. But like, not like, oh, I got to watch this again and again and again. Yeah. Well, it so just we, so became that way for me. We kind of touched on a little before we started, which we shouldn't do. Like mm-hmm. it's layered like this. You watch this and it's all this stuff in the mm-hmm. background that you don't really start to see yet. Yeah. I, this could have used another two or three viewings for me to sure. properly do this, but. Yeah, and I think it, it it for me personally, it does the thing that good spoof movies do. Like the difference between a Spy Hard and a Naked Gun, or a, or or even Johnny Dangerously, or whatever. Or in this case, Last Action Hero, which is sure. not quite a full on spoof. I think it's right. more of a satire. But 
it also has to be good on its own. You know, like I said that in the last two spoof movies we talked yeah, about. Sure. So it still functions as a good movie or, or an enjoyable movie. Rather, it's not like just gobbledygook like Spy Hard is, where they're just going scene to scene, making up stuff as they go along. Right? Hey, what movie haven't we made fun of? Yeah, like, yeah, like, right, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. And so, and so, what I meant was, as far as it had to come out when it came out, the real the miracle of the thing is that they got Arnold to do it when he was on the top of Arnold Mountain, right? Like mm, 1994 right. True Lies is coming out. He's still like destroying box office. He's made a string of hit action movies. And so if they're going to do this takedown, the fact of, of his career basically is what the movie is, right? Yeah. All the tropes, like you yeah. said, and all that stuff to get to do it when he could still do it. And like to do it now when he's like 60, 70 years old, I mean, know he's in his seventies now, but, he- he doesn't look like a badass old person. Exactly. He's a badass. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. So I think I it had to saying. happen then because he was still Arnold. He's still Arnold now, but you get what I mean. Yeah, no. Like he had that to be version on top of Arnold, Arnold Mountain, right. For that to happen, but but yeah, so let's get in let's get into the vitals here a little bit, but before we do that, I just want to say thanks to everybody listening at home. If you could do us a favor, whatever app you're using to listen to the show, whether it's Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you could go on there and leave us a review every five star review you leave helps us with the algorithm and pushes us out to more people and so drop us five stars we would greatly appreciate it if you're watching us on youtube all the obligatory youtube stuff make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe uh, if you like the video it helps us know that this is the kind of content that you want to see but it also tells youtube hey people like this and they'll also push it out to more people so for the algorithm for the algorithm. <laughs> All right, push that button. And uh, also, for as little as $3 a month, you can join our Patreon. And on there, we've got things like you can vote on upcoming episodes. You can uh, hear bonus recordings. You can see some behind-the-scenes content. You can even submit awards. Uh, to the show to be included uh, when we record here. So all kinds of ways you can interact with us. And if you want to reach out to the show, the best way to do it is at the email address. This show is trash at gmail.com where you can send us movie recommendations you can ask us questions you can tell us how much we suck you can send hate mail for bob yes i've been meaning to say where's my hate mail <laughs> whatever where's my hate mail whatever you want to do there and where's my love letter from ronald anderson <laughs> ronald uh i missed that appreciated man. your your input from the wraith uh, oh. <laughs> i saw a comment from him a couple days ago well uh, he's I miss that, man. he's a big fan of yours so all right, where's, well, where's my hate mail do you, you've you've got a hate mail we're gonna we're gonna do some mail after this. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, but you've got some hate mail. Don't worry. All right, I missed okay. it. Oh, um, <laughs> is it from Melissa or? No, 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 no. Not yet. We're not yet. Melissa. But she did say she was gonna send some. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're waiting. We're waiting. Oh, oh this with bated be breath. Good. And by the time this comes out, maybe it will have already arrived. But Ten pages. This is you know a little bit in advance, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, in the meantime, let's get into the vitals. So just to give you guys a general idea. Last Action Hero, as you kind of gathered from what we've said so far, is a satire slash spoof of Arnold's career, right? It's basically this kid in the real world goes to see an Arnold movie and ends up, through means we'll discuss, getting sucked into the movie and is inside. What what would it be like to be inside a ridiculous Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie? Essentially, yeah, sure. is the is what the that's the, point the of base the plot of it, right? Of it, right. The movie was directed by John McTiernan. Now, this is why I think it elevates the thing from just being another spoof or a satire. The fact that it's such a well made, well shot. This dude is the guy that directed Predator. <laughs> he directed Die Hard. <laughs> he directed The Thirteenth Warrior. He directed Die Hard with a Vengeance. He directed. Uh, what's the other one I'm missing? Wild Things. Wild. No, he didn't direct Wild Things, did he? Yeah. But there was another action movie, though, right after... Um, Let's find out. Yeah, look up his IMDb for me, will you? Anyway, the dude is just like the action director. I mean, just classic action movie after classic action movie. And so I thought it was really brilliant to say, okay, we're making a comedy, but it's about action movies. So let's make it look awesome and hire this guy. Yeah. Does that make sense? It is very much action movie Yeah. Oh, for sure. And cinematic, the way it was shot, and we'll go through as we talk about the movie, but even even some of the dialogue scenes are shot very cinematically. So he's given us Nomads, Predator, Die Hard, Hunt for Red October. That's what it was. The Medicine Man, Lax Action Hero, okay. Die Hard with the Vengeance, 
and Rollerball and Basic. Well, see, Rollerball is when it ended. Yeah. Because that was like the one of the biggest bombs of all time. And after that, his career just stopped. But up till that point, it was just like banger after banger after banger. And Red, Hunt for Red October is the one I hadn't Dude, thought I, of. I love Red October. I love Basic. <laughs> Both of those we yeah. can't do here. No, 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 no. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy's, I mean, the guy's got just an incredible resume. So it was directed by John McTiernan. It was, and then it was written by this. This is amazing. Zach Penn wrote the story. Wow, that's ironic. The guy. The guy's last name is Penn. It is. <laughs> this is the same guy that He's a writer that wrote Avengers. Oh, with the new Josh, ones. Josh Whedon. Yeah. Oh wow. And and then it was so that was a story credit. Like he came up with the idea for it. And the guy that actually wrote the script was Shane Black. Oh. Who's wrote X Men? Lethal was Weapon. The- Lethal Weapon. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Predator. Iron Man Three. Predator. Uh, uh, the Nice Guys. Uh, all these. All th- just one of the best screenwriters in Hollywood. And he created a lot of these action movie tropes that he's making fun of. I mean, the fr- Lethal Weapon basically created that in Forty Eight Hours. Basically created the buddy cop genre. Right. Mm-hmm. This guy. Right. Didn't and he help with X Men Three? Wasn't I? Am I Shane wrong Black? Yeah. I don't know if he helped with X Men Three. I know he wrote Iron Man Three. Oh, he wrote and directed Iron Man Three. Right? He wrote and directed that. Yeah. Well, that explains that stinker. Yeah. I, I like Iron I, Man I, Three. I, I, hate Iron I know Man you. I know you I hate it. Stand I love Iron it. Man Three. I love it. So the Anything worst Iron surprise Man. show ever. <laughs> you guys are just mad. Like, yeah. Mandarin, the about best the Mandarin. villain ever. And oh, it's <laughs> oh, this, I'm an actor. It's this guy. That's, do, you, do you ever see Iron Man three? Absolutely, I loved it. They've got strong feelings I about. Can't stand. It. I loved it too. I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> we, we might have to do it. We're split here on yeah. that one. Fifty. I'll do 50. Iron Man three. I'll pee all over it. <laughs> and it's he'll perfect be, tomato score. He'll be bound in a corner. Over that's there. right. All right. The movie starred Arnold Schwarzenegger, obviously Austin O'Brien. And Charles Dance, what a great name! This movie had a budget of eighty-five million dollars, yeah, and a box office of a hundred and thirty-seven million dollars. That sounds impressive. It just ain't, though, is it? Well, it isn't in relation to. You have to consider context of the time. What Arnold was pulling at that point—that was a major bomb. But that didn't for even him. make money. Well, not only did it not only make money because again, the theaters get half, yeah. right? But that same year, 94, the same year this came out, True Lies came out right before it and did like $500 million right. in 1994 money <laughs> yeah. at the box office. And that was kind of what Arnold was doing at the time, pumping out Total Recall and Predator and all the stuff. And just T2 was a couple of years before this and just making bank. And so for him for him to drop a major release and only make $130 million was a big miss for him. Well, and they dropped this thing right under Jurassic Park, too. That did not help mm-hmm. at all. That's what Arnold said. No. Him yeah. and John McTiernan said they they enjoyed making the movie and they enjoyed the movie, but they mm-hmm. said if they, they were trying to get the studio to wait until after, like a month after Jurassic Park. They could have used the month. Yeah. They yeah. didn't. They were like, nope, it's yeah, we're releasing it. <clears throat> well, not only that, but I thought it was poorly marketed, too. Like if you, if, And that, this is hard if you weren't back then to see how it was marketed, but it was marketed like Arnold's next big action movie. It wasn't like sold to the audience like it's a comedy satire. Right. And so people went and they're like, what the frick is this? They thought it was going to be the next Did you watch the Arnold trailer? action movie. Right. Have you watched the trailer for this? I actually watched the trailer. Did you watch the trailer? Okay, yeah. It is nothing like the movie. Like yeah. What you said is exactly accurate. Right. It's so they had a cut and release to make it like it's the next yes. big action movie. Yes. I gotcha. Which there is action Which in is it. Which is a miss sell, right. But it's not. To some degree. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So all all of that contributed to this falling on its face. Yeah. It was Arnold's first big chink in his armor in his in his career because yeah. he was like box office like titanium at that point. Yeah. Right? So. Now the uh, the soundtrack, on the other hand, <sighs> that thing went platinum in like seven months. Yeah, that great that, soundtrack. That thing Love was it. amazing. It's That's fit. where half the budget is. Megadeth is on there, right? Yeah, and, Megadeth, uh, yeah. yeah. ACDC, the ACDC, mm-hmm. Buckethead, yeah, all that stuff. Some good ones. The movie is currently sitting at a six point four on IMDb, and thirty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and a forty seven percent audience score. So it's rotten on critics and audience members, although audience members is close to 50-50. It's at 47%. But there's definitely bona fides for it being on here. Uh, critics and audiences have said it's bad, and the thing bombed when it hit the yeah. box office. So we're going to have to kick this thing around a little bit and see Poke what, see what comes out. Let's kick it. 
Let's let's do a flying elbow what, off the top rope. Let's Ooh, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So the movie opens, and it's Jack Slater three. Okay, so we're catching the very end of the the tail end of the most recent Jack Slater movie, and Jack Slater four is about to come out. Right. Yeah. And so you already know this is like one of those huge franchises where there's probably going to end up being seven or eight Jack Slater movies. Jack Slater being the character that Arnold Schwarzenegger plays. And so the first scene, it opens up and there's like, I don't know, 400 cop cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the way. most, <laughs> it's the most tropiest like cop standoff. Right. Right. There's a bad guy on a roof, and you literally you can't see where there's not a cop car. Right, it's, it's just so many cop cars, cars. all well, of them. The parking all lot of is them. tiled. With cop <laughs> That's cars. right, yeah. exactly. And everyone's doing the tropey, you know, the stuff. And we this is the first time, which I love. See, I have to keep going back to this, and I apologize. I'll probably do this a lot. But Shane Black wrote this. He wrote Lethal Weapon, which kind of introduced the captain trope, the captain that yells at everybody, right. you know, and says you're all sure. a bunch of dumbasses. And then that's essentially what. What uh, Lieutenant Decker is, right? I'm trying to remember who yep, the guy's. Lieutenant Decker, played by oh, Frank Frank McGray. Yep, is is that tropey police chief that's just going to be screaming at everybody? And so the movie opens, and he's just like, "Time to get down, put it down here." <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Not even okay. speaking words. <laughs> Half of what he says, you can't understand. Yeah, it's yeah. gibberish, Pur- purposely, right? Because it's up at top, it's up at top side, <laughs> and people lost body parts, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Now you go in there and it's your badge. You go in there and it's your badge, right? Because, you know, you got to say you're going to take their badge away. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, and and he throws it at him. The point is there's literally 200 cops. Yeah. But none if of them not can. not more. If not more. And, but none of them can do anything. It's got to no. take one man. We're waiting one for man. <laughs> and there's this many people here and we're waiting for a real hostage negotiation. That's right. That's right. And oh. Tina Turner's the mayor of whatever town this is, yeah. right? We've seen that before. Oh, city. And so here comes that I, old trope. Great intro for Arnold because you just see his feet, his boots, the music, and the music walking across the top of these cop cars until he steps <laughs> down right into frame with a cigar yeah, in I his love mouth. It. And the music. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear him putting the cigar out and he blows his smoke. Right. It's great. And they pack uh, like nine jokes and it's just this first walk up to the building, yeah. right? I mean, it's a great intro for the character because he's literally punching put people that come anywhere near him. The lieutenant governor, he punches right in the <laughs> yes, face. Right. The governor, Give me the real governor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the governor gets you cold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He, uh, Slater! Don't let him in. Don't let him in the building. The one cop's like, yeah, no problem. He kicks him in the nuts and sends him <laughs> flying. Catches the walkie-talkie. Uh, next one I'll hurt. And he crushes it in his yeah. hand. Like, can't you set it down? Let's it go. He has it, like, to disintegrate it. Yeah. How we, <laughs> yeah, what was the line there to uh, Here's a couple of acres. Yeah. And drop kicks uh, him into the next that's town. Right. Excuse me. Just, <laughs> You want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of anchors. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And then he cocks. The but this gun. is all. But this is all important because what what they're doing here is letting you know right away, this is ridiculous. All right. And so I imagine if you come in waiting, you think you're going to see the next serious action movie. You're already like. It, you're already like, what is this? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's doing his old Arnold. And thing. that either makes you a fan. Right. Or m- makes you go, I hate this already. And so you. This is not what I was expecting. And then you're immediately going to be standoffish with the rest of the film. Like right. You, you won't even. It's going to set a chance. the tone. It's going to set the tone immediately. And so you got to go into this, I think, with the right knowing, knowing what. Well, it and is. again, that goes back to what we were talking about. Had they had made a proper trailer. Yeah. Right. It would have made you go, like, oh, this might be a fun. Yeah. Because it's funny not, movie. It, it, it yeah. was PG thirteen too. This is mm-hmm. like for dads who are watching action movies and stuff, and it's a little too violent for the kids, or this, that, the other yeah. thing. You know, like, hey, we could take it. this. I mean, <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, well, we can't, they can't go see Predator with right, me, right? Yeah, but we can take them to see this. All right, my yeah. daughter, my daughter sat down to watch the first five, the whole scene she watched. Yeah, and then she got up and left. But it was funny. Because she's like, what are you watching? I go, Last Action Hero. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. It didn't click in her head who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. She just calls him the Jingle All the Way guy. <laughs> <laughs> Put the cookie down. That's what, he, that's what she yeah, remembers. About. Right, right, right. So real quick, she sits down, and she sees him doing the, the cop entrance and gets down. She got super excited. Yeah. And then the police chief yelling. And she looks at me, and she goes, why is that man yelling all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I go, he's the police captain or the lieutenant. Like, he do. yells at everybody. You have to. 
And then she it got up to the roof, and then she she, she was she, out she of she out. lost interest. She lost interest, but she came well, back here and there throughout the movie. But sure, ultimately lost interest. I, it's not my like, wife. Same story. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> watching the movie, and she's like, I'm out. Well, similar, <laughs> I'm out. similar age group. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, it, I think they could have done a they did a disservice. They could have. It's not like Arnold had. I don't know why they were worried to promote this as a comedy because it's not like Arnold. Hadn't done comedy at that point, right? He'd done right. comedies. He did Kindergarten Cop and Twins and both sure. with and Ivan so Reitman. Both with Ivan Reitman. So people had already accepted him as being able to do Wait comedy. A Wait a second. Those are Ivan Reitman movies? Kindergarten Cop, I believe, is an Ivan Reitman film. And yeah. uh, so Twins. Twins. Oh. Twins is an Ivan Reitman film. That's yeah. why I love those movies. Yeah, man. And I had no idea. Quick, I don't oh, yeah. pay attention to any of that stuff. Quick so. side yeah. note, there was a, Ivan Reitman, before he untimely passed, was supposed to do triplets with... Yeah. Dane DeVito, Schwarzenegger, and I think Tracy Morgan. Was going to oh be Eddie God. Murphy. It was going to be Eddie Murphy. And then he said no, and so then it was going to be Tracy Morgan. That would have been phenomenal. So yeah. What we a found great out they had another. Combo that yeah. would have been. That would be they have a third brother, they and he's a black still guy. Do this. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah. Oh, it's Black Dagger. <laughs> Tracy right. Morgan's awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right. So he goes up into the building, and on top of the building is the Ripper. He kicks the door down. He of course he does. He can't go through a door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <Although> it's <laughs> What's he what supposed to grab the doorknob and turn it? He, he doesn't, doesn't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't yeah. touch things. <laughs> <laughs> the door flies about 15 feet, <laughs> takes out a kid. There's like a whole kindergarten oh, class. <laughs> There's like a whole kindergarten class up there. And the Rippers, it's basically, it's Tom Noonan, this good character actor, yeah. in uh, this like rain slicker and great the, bad guy vibe. messed up face. Great bad. Yeah. And this cool axe. And he's up there. He's got these kids hostage. And it's your typical tropey standoff scene yeah. in an action movie. Well, the right? kid yells out, Dad. You right. Know, like, oh, Dad. Oh, He's it's like, his kid. Oh, yeah. oh, now you're like, oh, now I got a feel for this guy. Right. And he goes, uh, now lose the cannon or, yeah. you, you know, you lose your kid. And he drops the gun. Oh, so good. <laughs> He's like, just one gun? And yeah. He starts. <laughs> yeah. So many guns. <laughs> so many guns. I think he had one up his butthole. Oh, it was yeah. just like guns. one came out of his uh, chin. <laughs> just just pulled it out. Kept pulling it out like a samurai sword. Right. Just dropped it down. He opened his head and there was one in there. Yeah. <laughs> Took out a CPU chip from the first Terminator. <laughs> dropped it down. <laughs> it was hilarious. And he's, didn't he didn't, he, well, no, he actually, so I thought maybe he still had another one. That's what I was thinking. Right? <laughs> for, for the joke, he's got like a little Derringer. He's got something. something up his sleeve. But he actually didn't. All he had was a grenade. Yeah. Which he throws over and or then. Pulls the pin and Pulls the pin and throws yeah. it like, but it's a bluff, right? It, right? Where he thinks it's a bluff. So the Ripper has the kid pick it up. Be like, that toy can't hurt the boy, but this axe can. And. Slater's kid knows knows that it's a knife, and so he pulls the whatever that thing's called on a grenade. The hits the spoon, handle, the the, the spoon off, the spoon the off spoon, of it yes. or whatever, and a knife comes out the bottom of it, and he stabs him. But we don't. We find out later, but we don't yet know what happens because at this point the movie goes blurry, right? And you, this is where we realize we're watching a movie. We we hear we see Daniel Madigan, where we introduced focus. to Daniel, right, yelling "Focus!" in the theater. And this is actually going to be the main character of the movie. Is this 12, Austin 12, O'Brien. 13, 12, 13? I mean, that's what I thought yeah, he was youngish. about. Yeah. Youngish, middle school. Uh, Austin O'Brien starring as Daniel Madigan. And he's um, my girl. Yeah. The that's kid from my, my girl too. I'm my sorry. girl too. Yes. Right. Macaulay Culkin didn't get murdered by a bunch of bees for you to think he was. That was Austin great O'Brien. writing, by the way. That was great writing. What was the murder by bees? It's great writing. You're the only one that stood up and cheered at the end of My Girl. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 <laughs> Take that, I just thought it was. Culkin. I thought it was good writing. I was like, "Wow, they actually did that." Okay, that's pretty scary. All right, I think I think uh, you've got some deep seated things about Macaulay Culkin that you need to work through. Well, or I mean, bees, or, or bees, bees. <laughs> or he just loves bees. I love get bees. Murdered I love by bees. Murder people. <laughs> I love bees. So he goes upstairs and he meets uh, the projectionist, which is played by Robert Prosky. And what's the projectionist's name? Nick. I can't, Nick. Nick. That's right, Nick. And this place we, we kind of see is kind of a dump, right? right. I mean, it's, it down, right? they're, they're about yeah. to, we find out later, they're going to close the, the place down. But it's an old movie theater in not a great neighborhood in New York. And this is the f- first thing, just from a filmmaking standpoint, that I loved how different the two places were shot. Yeah. Right? Like clean, 
perfect looking well, movie world. And not, yeah, not even is it that it's like clean, perfect movie world, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. It's, it's not, you know, which, and there's parts of Los Angeles that look as bad as New York, but the way they right. shot it, yeah. it looks great. But then when you go into the real world scenes, the way that McTiernan, McTiernan shot that stuff was great because yeah. it looks terrible. It's always Batman esque. Yeah. It's yeah. It's dark. always raining. There's hookers and yeah. it's like just real looking people. Yeah. Which and, one's the paradise, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just a great contrast. Just I want to give him props from a filmmaking standpoint that, that he was able to do that. That was really good. But he's, Got to go back to school because we find out it's like 11 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Yeah, he's, he's like, there. he should have started school four hours ago. <laughs> right. So it's like noon at this point, I'm guessing. So Nick sends him, but before he sends him back to school, um, he says, you know, um, I'm previewing the print for the new Jack Slater movie tonight at midnight. Just be me. And generally when creepy old men invite you at midnight to their empty movie theater, you want to say no. Again, a trope of the movies at the time. <laughs> I mean, we had GPK with the old guy giving the kid a bath at the bottom of his basement. I mean, I don't know what it was where it was like these kids who had no father types had to like hang out with old men, hang out with other guys that they just felt were close to them. I don't know. I guess thing is just nothing was creepier than having Captain Martini sit there watching the oh the kid get garbage pail kids get bathed by midget nightmares. Oh my god. (laughs) I have to relive this again. <laughs> <laughs> I have All forgotten right. about it. I mean, literally, well, haven't thought about it in a you're while. You're welcome. So, but long story, I want to mention this one scene that happens when Danny goes back to school because it's one of my favorites in the entire movie is they start watching the Lawrence Olivier, which we had to watch that stuff in school sometimes. I think actually they made us watch the Mel Gibson one because that was more recent at the time, but they're watching Hamlet. And fun note, the lady that played the teacher – was married to Lawrence Olivier in real life. She, when she was like, Oh, you might know him from the Polaroid commercial or whatever. That was right. his ex wife. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he starts to daydream about what, what Hamlet would be like. If Schwarzenegger was in it, he, which he pulled our gag. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> he did the thing that we do. Like, you know, what would make this movie way better <laughs> <laughs> is if Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it. Hamlet is taking out the trash. I know. Yeah. It's yeah. The it literally <laughs> proves our point. That's what I'm saying. Even Hamlet with Lawrence Olivier. Right. It would be better, better if <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it. Who said I'm fair? It's right. And it's great because it's the first time since Conan you saw him you know, swinging a sword around and riding a horse and killing people. And so he looked obviously very comfortable doing that stuff. But it's hysterical. He uses the skull from the famous scene to, like, kill a bad guy with it. He just right. turns and he chucks, chucks it. it and it's just, just smashes all over the bad guy's but face. But then he's killing dudes with Uzis Uzi. and, yeah. and, yep. <laughs> and, and bombs going off in That's the right. Coliseum. You know? That's right. Yeah. Lighting up a cigar to be or not to be. No one's going to tell this sweet prince good night. <laughs> <laughs> a plus plus on that. A plus. It's just like a little random movie trailer that they cut together, which just looked like it was a blast. Kudos to Schwarzenegger for like doing this movie and yeah. understanding how ridiculous he is in real life and just making fun of himself. Right. Did you ever think you'd see Arnold, even though it was for two minutes playing Hamlet and literally saying the to be or not to be speech. I mean, yeah. it's just, well, it's and great. at that time, who knows if he was like, Oh, this is great. Yeah. I'm going to do this. this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> he literally thought he was killing it. That's right. yeah. This is wonderful. Not to be. <laughs> Do I get to punch a horse? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's the only thing that he didn't get to do, unfortunately. But he uh, he wakes up, and, and essentially what ends up happening is we got to get to the heart of the movie here, is this is a really, there's really interesting, when he comes home, he obviously gets in trouble with his mom for cutting class to go to the movies. And she works nights. I mean, they don't have a big place. The kitchen is, like, smaller than the room that we're sitting in right now. Sure. Right? It's tiny. The apartment is tiny. It's New York, low rent. And he's got to be there by himself late at night because mom works. Sure. Waiting tables, it looks like. And he's trying to leave at midnight to go watch Jack Slater 4. And this dude just oh, he gets robbed. breaks yeah, into yeah. the apartment. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's not just heartbreaking, but it's shot very realistically. It's not like played for comedy or anything. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just like. 
the know, dude. And his mom walks out. It's like, hey, you know, lock the door immediately after I leave. Top lock. Yeah. He goes, to, opens the door. I was like, oh, I got to close it. Somebody's walking by. I mean, it's, right. it's crazy. It's the second he turns his back, doesn't even get the key in the door to lock it, and boom, he's being pushed right. and robbed. Boom. Yeah. And he has this moment, which they call back to later. It's, a you know, with, with Charles Dance, but he said, oh, you're a tough guy. And he puts the knife on the sink and says, all right, I'll turn around and and uh, go ahead and do it. But he doesn't actually have the courage or the bravery to do anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he ends up just getting handcuffed to the to the toilet or the sink or whatever. And it's part of the dilemma yeah. of being a bad guy or a good guy, I should say. Right. Mm-hmm. The and choi- uh, the choices you make. Yeah. And the, so the guy robs them, although they have junk, they have nothing worth robbing. Right. right? And uh, yeah, they didn't have a they didn't have a <laughs> quasar. Uh, yeah, the they, quasar. they didn't have a quasar. Right. That's for sure. Oh, they got a TV that'll get him twenty bucks. That's right. Go fishing. That's right. <laughs> and so the kid ends up. Mom doesn't even come home from work when his son got a, did, like assaulted. Did you find that weird? You're sitting in the police station, and the cops not even making eye contact. Like, Remember, just to go straight home. He's just like uh, uh, whatever. Like, but the, they're what? trying to set this idea well, that I, the real world sucks compared to. Fantasyland. I also okay. think that they're trying to play it as it happens a lot. Just right. be happy you're alive. Right. So I think that was the attitude of just because if it was, if it was in the movie, Jack Slater would have personally the taken the case. Right. We're not going to find the guy. It's New York. This is a right. horrible part I of town you. we live in. This is how cops in the real world are. Right. And here's Jack Slater. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So to fast forward a little bit, just so we can get into the the heart of the movie, he ends up rushing from the police station to the movie theater. He's late. Nick had almost given up on him, mm-hmm. but they're not going to watch Jack Slater for, and just another great moment that's filmed so well is when he shuts the door behind him. The fact that there's that work light that backlights Nick while he gives this little speech about the ticket just makes the yeah. whole thing seem really eerie and cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a great choice, right? And he's like, well, you got to have a ticket to see a movie. And if I got just the one and he goes through this whole thing, about Houdini had played the theater when he was a kid, and this was a magic ticket that could transport yeah. you. But uh, he was never brave enough to use it, so it's still well, intact. It's, it's not crazy so much he was that brave enough to use it. He didn't want to kill one of his idols, his heroes, by mm-hmm. the ticket being fake. If the ticket wasn't actually magic, didn't do anything, then that right. would have meant Houdini was fake. Well, that's why he was afraid to use yeah. it, not because of what. Oh, he, well, he didn't want to get happen. sucked into gotcha. a movie, but that he was afraid it would. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's crazy to me that they don't make a movie about a kid who gets a golden ticket and has some like all his dreams just come true. They that's like they a should do that premise primed for a great movie. Yeah, yeah. at least two great movies. They yeah. probably could do it, or maybe one great movie, one semi great movie. <laughs> <laughs> One and great movie and one that really didn't need to happen. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I would take Last Action Hero over Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Anyway. What are you talking about? What? There what? is a movie like that? Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, there's not a good movie like that besides oh, okay. Last Action Hero. All right. So <laughs> he tears the ticket in half. And this is important. Puts half of it in the ticket box. Yes. Foreshadowing. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> Uh, which I thought was a really great twist, but we he hands Daniel the other half of the ticket and into the movie he goes. Jack Slater for da 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 Yeah. Mega death opening metal sequence. The hard rock. Yep. All that stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> I, love, I love the catchphrase of Jack Slater. Big mistake, right? That's yeah, his yeah, that's, that's his catchphrase. His catchphrase, right. Even earlier in the movie, Danny's like Jack Slater four. They killed his favorite second cousin. Big, Big mistake. mistake, right? Like he right. knows the trailer by heart. Yep. You know what I mean? Right. The fact that we're on the second cousin. The fact that it's the fourth right. movie, and that's that's a joke in itself. Is yes. that they know they're milking this thing dry by the time you get to the fourth movie, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't say they killed his kid or his wife or whatever. Like killed his favorite second cousin. Big mistake. Well, they already killed this kid. <laughs> and in, that's what I'm saying. Part yeah. Three, in right? Part three. Uh, and and his second cousin is played by Art Carney, of mm. all people. Do you guys ever watch The Honeymooners back in the day? Yeah. That was one of The Honeymooners yeah. was Cousin Frank, or second Cousin Frank. Yeah. yeah. It was Norm, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so the Jack Slater 4, now he's not inside the movie yet, but it opens with uh, Vivaldi, who's played by Anthony Quinn, mm-hmm. is interrogating Art Carney, who's Jack Slater's favorite second cousin. 
in the whole world. In the whole world, <laughs> which is just the typical action movie opener with like, okay, these are the bad guys. Like the stuff we talk about in all sure, these movies, yeah, sure. right? Here's our evil plan. He literally walks over to the other bad guy and goes, they think we are actually banding together, but nobody oh. knows different. <laughs> yeah, no, right. like, And he gives the entire plot <laughs> right. so that everyone knows. So everyone's Next. on the same page. <laughs> exactly. I got up to go to the bathroom. What's going on? What's going on? What's, yeah. <laughs> and this is also where we meet Benedict. Yeah. Played by Charles Dan. Daddy Lannister. I don't know how many of you guys ever saw Game of Thrones. Any of you saw Game of Thrones? No. No. Okay. This is the probably the thing he's most well known for is playing the uh, Tywin Lannister, the 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 patriarch of the Lannisters in Game of Thrones. But here he plays Benedict. This uh, fortunately had something successful to do with his career before that whatever happened. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> he play. What is Benedict? I want to say he was like a British hit. He's not like a hit man. He's just he's like a British an assassin. assassin. Yeah, he's, he's an a assassin. British assassin. He's got a glass eye. Yeah. That changes throughout the movie. Well, he has a whole right. kit of glasses. Yeah, you right. see Depending that a little later. Mood. Sure. Right, 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 right. But the the they establish right in the first scene that he's a crack shot. Like from all the yeah. way across the back without patio, even looking. without even looking, he hits a bullseye right next to cousin Frank's head. So that's important to know. He doesn't second miss. Cousin Frank, huh? Second cousin Frank. <laughs> Not just Jack <laughs> Slater's favorite, favorite second so that's cousin. Right. Favorite second cousin. My bad. He's got other second cousins. He doesn't give a crap yeah, about. No. <laughs> Screw them. Yeah. But this one, he brings this one groceries. That's right, Norm. Okay. I'm bringing you groceries. <laughs> yeah, quick thing, real quick. Yeah, Did you know that Alan Rickman was uh, was asked by John McTiernan to play? Benedict. Well, that would have been the perfect thing to do because he would have gave him the chance to do what Arnold is doing in the movie, make fun of all the parts he played. So he said no, obviously. Uh, which is a bummer. And then Charles Dance found out that he said no, so he wore a shirt on set said, I'm cheaper than Alan Rickman. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Can you imagine, though, if Hans Gruber had played the part, man? You know what? I love Charles Dance in this movie. So, yeah. I mean. No, he's great. Way, yeah, he yeah. did a great job. He's one of my favorite parts of this whole movie because he nailed it. But I yeah. think he played a little... Alan Rickman turned up to 11. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think Alan Rickman would have been great. I mean, he's one of the greatest American movie villains, yeah. Hans Gruber. So. I, I loved him. I love Charles Dance. But I think what Rickman represented would have meant more to the spoof of the absolutely. whole thing. Right. No, I absolutely agree sense? with you. Yeah. 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 yeah so. I, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. But, anyway, the whole thing is to set up the fact that they're trying to get the cops to believe that the – Gangs are banding together, but that he's really going to take him out and be himself. Whatever. It really doesn't matter what the bad guys are doing in this movie. No. Because <laughs> it's, it's a big mistake. Right. right. He does. They do that pan in where the guy goes, everyone will know Vivaldi number one. All right. With the thumbs up. Yeah, and sure. Danny's sitting in the movie. They're going, oh, man, you're dead. You're dead, man. Just like we do with everybody that fights Arnold in a movie. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, this guy's toast. Uh, <laughs> and this is the where it cuts to cousin Frank's house and Jack Slater pulls up with his groceries. And there's two cops already parked outside, right? Yes. And do you know what they're spoofing there? No, it's lethal weapon because it's a, it's a black cop and a oh, white yeah, cop. He says, right. I'm going to retire. And he's like days. two days. Yeah. Retire. They do the little jazz riff right after oh, he says it, you're right. which is like a lethal weapon thing. And the guy that wrote lethal weapon wrote this. So it's just a little yeah. layer thing. That's hilarious to me, but Yes, he had to sneak that in there. But uh, they're about to kick the door, and he's like, we got a tip that this is a crack house. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is my second cousin's house. Yeah. He doesn't do drugs. All you'll, you'll find in there is aspirin. Yeah. <laughs> you kick the front door, you're going to need one. You're going to need one. <laughs> That's right. And he uh, takes his groceries, he sets them on the porch, and and he goes to kick the door in yeah, himself. I and love he, it. Right? He stops, and he opens the door with a doorknob. Yeah, yeah. Growth. There's after four movies, he's growing as a character. Yes, he walks in. This is the dumbest, I love that he's right in front thing. of the door. I know, so dumb. Just opens it to him there, tied. <laughs> he knows he tied up. He's like Frank. Frank, shut up and listen, listen to me. I got to tell you the plot of the movie before I die. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. It's like, with my time cards. With my, yes, that was the dumbest thing. So, so explain to me how that works. The perfectly timed time cards. All right, so for the audience at home, there's like a little clip on Cousin Frank's vest. who's all bloodied and beaten up and about to pass away. And he pulls the the cards out, and they're like index cards or whatever, and he's, he's filing them back and forth. 
it goes five. The next one says four. The next one says three. And then when he gets to two, why did it take you that long, first of all? Yeah. <laughs> we got it at five. <laughs> I wonder if these were lucky lottery numbers. That's probably why it took so long. He's like, wait a minute. Is it, are these, are these it would have been funnier if he had three and a half in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, five, two four, four, yes. three and a half. Oh. But then the whole thing explodes. Like, like, how does that bomb work? Where... With paper countdown, you I think it might have been a uh, 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 foot related, like a like a pressure pressure, point. pressure points on the floor. Maybe. Yeah, but okay. what if he hadn't picked up the the clips? I don't know. No, he stepped on like when he was walking. Like right, but why points. have but why have the? But he's saying the numbers are completely <laughs> obsolete. <laughs> maybe game, maybe he's telling him you got five seconds before the pressure play blows you up. I don't know. I'm, it just yeah. <laughs> because the reason why I say they're pressure plate related because they all fly when the bomb goes off. Slater yes. flies up in the air. It's just the both a, cops fly up in I the think air. That's it's a great explosion. explosion. Bomb, it's a great explosion. Bomb yeah. trophy. Yeah, it's very trophy bomb. bomb. They obviously built a house out of balsa wood there. Absolutely. Yes. And the, you, you see when he walks in, you see nothing else of the house that's they put them right right in, in camera room. it's yeah. like we sh- we will show nothing else in this house but cousin frank with the best death line of all time i'm out <laughs> i'm out of here <laughs> right. eyes roll back eyes shut done when I die, I want to be able to say, I'm out of here right before. <laughs> I'll be at the side of your bed. I'll be like, are you, are you done yet? Did you? And you'll like look up when I open. No, no. I'm, I'm still close. <laughs> Here's some time cards. <laughs> Five, four. Were you going to say something? I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I just, yeah. it was his, uh, those are actually his last words on film. That's, oh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, he didn't do anything else after that. Our Carney. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was it. That was it for him. That was it. Imagine that that guy in his storied career. And that's the last, last thing he did is this scene with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And he goes, this ridiculousness. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. So the house blows up and Danny is, I feel like he's us, right? I mean, he's literally sitting there. He's like, minor wounds, both cops dead. Like he just yeah, knows yeah, immediately what's, what's going to sure. happen. And of course, they're like in the palm tree <laughs> up here, right? Yeah. Arnold's got like a like a Smoking little smoking off yeah. of their <laughs> off their heads. I have two two days to retire. That's right. Oh, well, down. And then the it looks like a Looney Tunes cartoon, just the <laughs> blink 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 blink, <laughs> and they're just covered in soot. All right, so then the you see the bad guys roll up, and what kind of truck was that? It was like a red. It was like 50, an old fifty six Ford F one hundred. Okay, so I. I love those kind of. I don't know yeah. what they're called, but Pick trucks. They're great. Filled with the greatest. I mean Fords. Filled with the greatest action stuntmen. If you look Some at of them. all those stuntmen, were in Lethal Weapon, Die, Die Hard. Hard. Oh yeah, those, all those Big guys. Big Trouble Little China. All our yeah. The one guy was that well, Asian dude Clint that's Howard. better than everything. <laughs> the one guy totally looked like Clint Howard. I was like, the guy, the 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 fatter guy with the glass eye, the yeah. real glass eye. He was in Maverick. He played one of Alfred Molina's goons in yes. Maverick, Richard Donner film. The Asian guy in there was the dude. Well, he's in Big Trouble Little China. Yep. He was a Wing Kong guy, but he also was a dude in Die Hard that was like grabbing <laughs> snacks from under the, the crunch you know, bar. The, the crunch bar from <laughs> under the the snack bar so while is he's that waiting. Appropriate that he died by an ice cream cone. Then? It's yeah. super appropriate. Well, what's so ice before we get to that, the Arnold jumps in. Is this the Bonneville? Yes. Okay, because yeah. I don't know what the car the is. most like. indestructible automobile in L.A. County. <laughs> Sixty nine Pontiac Bonneville, <laughs> and it's a Pontiac. Perfect. Why is that perfect? I don't know. I drove a Pontiac. Oh, okay. It was great. You cannot equate what you drove to that car. (laughs) You know what? I love my Pontiac. My Pontiac Grand Prix. It was great. Pre? That's not just as good as a Bonneville? No, it's not just as good as a Bonneville. I'll well, say that. that. Year, to that year? No. <laughs> no. They literally <laughs> spelled like a 90. It. They literally spelled it. I'm just it relishing pricks. in the fact that it was pricks. a Pontiac, so that's why I was excited. Okay. All right. So he jumps. It's a great jump into the. To the I mean, he does it seamlessly. Arnold jumps in and like seemingly hits the gas at the same time yeah. and, and takes off and the hard rock kicks in. Yeah. Big gun by da, ACDC. Da, da, da. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's fantastic. <laughs> he actually got ACDC to do that song. That was actually <laughs> was a new for song for the movie. A, a new yeah. song for the movie. He, he sought out That's ACDC incredible. and he was even in the music video. He watched the music video for it. Arnold Schwarzenegger's in the music oh. video. The amount of tropes in this car chase it must have been so much fun for these action filmmakers right. to be like, how many can we pack into this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And do them all. Could you imagine how much fun all it would be them. for the stuntmen to actually like get their face on yeah. the TV? Not only <laughs> we're going to do our own stunts as ourselves, as our bad guys, and out here not hiding who. 
For sure. Yeah. How'd you like the chase scene, Clint? Dug, dug it. It was dug awesome. It. Yeah, it was it was super realistic. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. how everything would happen. Landing on semi truck trailers. Yeah. Sure. That's there was realistic. Like three different times where a car exploded in midair. Yeah. yeah. While so cool. nothing happened. Like it would just jump Scratched. and oh, yeah. blow up. Yeah. Like the guy getting <laughs> shot and launched into the front of the ice cream truck. Yeah. Yes. And, and then so the ice cream truck blows up. All, yeah. All it takes to blow up an ice cream truck is a dude to go through the windshield. Yeah, that's a, and then the ice cream <laughs> truck explodes. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> ice cream trucks. Yeah, no, it's a uh, very volatile. mechanism. It's very ice. volatile, and then an ice cream <laughs> cone the, hits the dude in the back of the head. They do that to make Smokey, who's driving the thing, be very careful to not hit children because you don't want the kids to come through the windshield. <laughs> that guy that was driving the the Smokey. red the red truck was one yeah, of my favorite be. henchmen. Oh, he's great. He's in a lot of. Favorite action films. And the ice cream truck, when it explodes, uh, it impales a cone into the back of one of the bad guy's heads. And Arnold <laughs> says, iced that guy to cone a phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're driving with no hands. Yeah. You think it's easy. You got to practice a lot. You never, ever do it in heavy traffic. That's right. Uh, Arnold is just making fun of the stupid one-liners. Like later on, when the kid's annoying him, he says, who does the doctor treat? And he goes, patience. Look at the elbow of my jacket. What is it doing? Wearing thin, that was a stretch, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's just Arnold making fun of himself. Yeah, it's I also stuff. love that he uh, honored Clint Eastwood with his handgun. Like, is that? A, yeah, it was a, it was a, his Jack Slater was also a very oh. big callback to Dirty Harry. Cause gotcha, he's a huge Dirty Harry fan. I didn't know that. Well, mm-hmm. and a little known thing. I mean, just all the little like hints and winks at other things. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, literally, yeah, the the outfit that Jack wears. Is pretty much a Terminator outfit, just different colors. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Blue jeans, T-shirt, leather jacket. Yep, for I sure. Mean, and and instead the, of it being black, it's brown. Instead of the mm-hmm. white T-shirt, it's red. I mean, for sure. Which yeah. is also, I don't know if you guys play Mortal Kombat 11, but yeah. Terminator is one of the guest characters on the game. Yes, and he has those outfits, so you can really? make Jack Slater. Oh, dude! All right, yeah. this game. I'm yeah. immediately playing this game now. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing this game now. <laughs> Yeah, man. So they had this whole big trophy chase. And during the chase, the ticket in Danny's pocket starts to, like, sparkle. Yeah. Okay. And the bad guys, one of the things they're doing is they're lighting these grenade or not, or TNT, sticks. TNT clusters. Yeah, 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 yeah. And chucking them in Jack's car. And he's just shooting them out of the air. <laughs> goosh, goosh, goosh. And they're ricocheting <laughs> other ways. Yeah. <laughs> Not exploding whatsoever. No. While he's Bullet driving, he's, knocking, he's able to look. He's, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's, he's knocking them off their access yes. by hitting them with a bullet. <laughs> and they go spinning the other way. They don't explode. Right. They just but get, one of them flies through the movie screen and yeah. into the movie theater because a portal has now been opened by yes. this ticket. And he's Which is there a fun scene. Eating I popcorn. Do enjoy that yeah. Because it's, it's like rolling slowly down the aisle. Good, that was a good tension builder when it started rolling down yeah. the thing. You're just like, uh. And Nick? he dumps his popcorn on it and then just runs towards the screen. Because you would. Because you would try to get out. Yeah, you're running away <laughs> from the doorway. <laughs> right. And the thing blows up. And then the next thing, he wakes up and he's in the back seat of the car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the middle of a chase scene in, a, in an Arnold movie. I mean,. Just the greatest thing that could have ever happened to somebody. That's a dream come true for you. <laughs> Absolutely. I was living vicariously through this kid, right? I was yeah, like, oh, sure. my gosh, this would be so awesome. <laughs> because you're one of the good guys, so nothing's going to happen to you. Like, yeah. we saw that through the movie. Unless right. you play chicken with him. Oh, so and play, you're the comedic uh, Well, even relief. then, he yeah. got launched onto a house and fell <laughs> off of it, and he was fine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, he ends up in, in this movie, and is in there for the second half of the car chase, right? Where Arnold's like, who the hell are you? Basically, stay down, be quiet. And and then that's it. They end up, I'm trying to remember how the thing ends. Well, They play chicken with the guys, well, right? Yeah, there's the scene where they're pulling out of the ravine. They launch onto the... Onto the, oh, uh, they land the on the trailer. <laughs> they jump off that. Then in the background, you see the black van that was also chasing them, yeah. like launch into the air and just explode in midair <laughs> for no reason. The, the right. There's a gravi- There's a altitude switch or and something. When you get he, certain high, it blows up. He pulls the sweet like 180 into the back spot. And That's he's right. Just like, and then they're talking. It gives he them goes, a chance to does talk. Does this suck weenie or what? Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. Oh god. Yeah, and then they they play chicken, and the dudes end up in the yeah, music again, video or wherever. All the great yeah. tropes. You got all the boxes, the launching yes. of yes. the truck, the explosion, the all that stuff. Yeah, into the into the photo shoot of the uh, scantily clad. You know, gotta women. have just. Naked oh. women everywhere, right? That so. was great. Great scene. Yeah. Very well shot. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> but anyway, so Jack ends up bringing Danny back to the police station with him because yes. you wouldn't take him to social services, as Danny says no. in the real world. There, there isn't any. You, would, you, you wouldn't make me a partner. He's trying to prove to him that he's in a movie. Two of the best walk-ons ever in that oh, scene. That's right. You well, got uh, Sharon Stone as basic instinct yep. character, and then uh, T one thousand, yeah. And even he, like, hey, Jack, did you <laughs> did you see who that? And he's like, I, I don't have time. Right yeah, as yeah. they're walking into the police station, all these cameos, yeah. Yeah. Then uh, we go inside, and they've got this station where they're pairing up cops with their buddy. Yeah. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It's like really, you're with the rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> Oy like, un- Unlikely couples here. <laughs> That's yeah. right. The ghost cop was one of them. Wasn't there a yeah. ghost cop? Yeah, Humphrey Bogart. Was Humphrey the ghost Bogart cop. was the ghost cop, and then there was an animated cat with yeah. Danny DeVito. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Whiskers. Whiskers. Whiskers that's right. Whiskers. Yeah. It's just great yeah. stuff. I mean, you could tell these guys Layers. were throwing everything yeah. in there. Well, and just the the whole friendships. I mean, the yeah. fact that like anyone who knew Schwarzenegger was in this movie. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, it wasn't she the wife in in uh, Total, Total Recall? Recall? Yeah, Sharon Stone. Mm-hmm. Sharon Stone yeah. and and Robert Patrick were in there. And who's his buddy? Dana DeVito was in Twins, all the way from mm-hmm. uh, Conan and stuff like that. Uh, Franco. Oh, oh, he uh, was in there. What's his name? Th- uh, I know who you're talking. Bjorn. What's his name? Uh, the guy in the movie, his name was something practice, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's oh, that's yeah. F. Murray Abraham. Yeah. 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 But regardless, yeah, he Danny starts to try and convince Jack Slater that they are existing inside of a movie, right? And he's trying to point out to him, he's like, "Look, you know the the police commission, all these the tropes, commissioner, right? or whatever." He's trying to point all the tropes to him. Yeah. The lieutenant who comes in again, he's screaming at Jack. <laughs> yeah. Or, I got the I got the chamber of commerce doing the t- cartwheels in my cocoa factory. <laughs> um, good line, by the way. Yes, because I never knew that's where you got that from. Oh the yeah, Mummer, man. No, that's You're why we crazy. did. We we I put had it in no there. No idea. That's I thought you came up with all no, that. No, we did so that. We did that when as a that wink. Came right through. I was yeah. like. James. <laughs> no, we did that at, because I was playing a police chief. I had no idea when we were writing so the that, movie, though. So that was our wink to again, it, it, Last I, Action Hero. I just finally started watching it again, and oh, yeah. all these things started coming forward. I had no idea if that, you that think line was in there. I'm going to play a police chief and not talk about the Chamber of Commerce doing cartwheels in my, my cocoa, cocoa factory. factory. There's no. He's got the Boys and Girls Club doing something in his yeah. Hershey Highway. Or what, like he's always talking about some organizations up his butt, right? About the damage. This weird lady looking sack of puppy poo. <laughs> you know, like that whole. Right, and he makes he's like meet your new partner, right? And it's like yeah. no, hold on. If this was the real world, Jack, they would give me a social worker. They wouldn't make me a police like your partner as right. a police officer. Hi, and I'm Jack Slater's new partner. Jack and I will be partners for the remainder of the film. For the remainder of the film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, and they uh, they interrogate him, too, because they're like, how do you know so much about us, right? And ultimately... <laughs> when your wife left you for that circus midget. <laughs> <laughs> you promised me you wouldn't tell. I did it. Well, how did he know? Well, how did he know? <laughs> he knows everything about these guys. Jack Slater won. What's winning got to do with this? No, the very first Jack Slater. You tell your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bob can just do the whole movie. Uh, uh, sorry. All right. Anyway, he, he continues to try and convince him that the Vivaldi mob is joining forces with the Torellis, mm-hmm. or that they're not actually. And as they're going through their investigation, he's trying to point out all these tropes, right? Uh, the fact that he knows what he's going to say, right? All his catchphrases. He turns around at one point and says, I'll be back. And he's like, you didn't know I was going to say that. And he's like, everybody knows that you're going to say right. that, right? Yeah. It's your calling card. We're just, we're just waiting for you to figure out how to work it in. And they go to one of my favorite things they do while he's trying to convince him is they go to a blockbuster video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest. Why did this blockbuster not exist in Antioch? And everybody that works there is a smoking hot, God. like model. Yeah. Okay. Right. With a five 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 number. With a five 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 number. I'm willing to bet that everyone's number starts with five hey, five five. That was a really cool chick you got there. 
to get a number for <laughs> me. <laughs> it's like that's why we have area codes, right? It's just it's always yeah. got an answer for. Well, everything. and they walk up, and there's the oh, and they sh- they do the pan where yeah. it shows the bottom of the so stand. the Terminator Two. Yeah, and it thing. comes up, and it's Sylvester Stallone. Yes, that guy's amazing. He, says, <laughs> <laughs> he does such a good job. In it that was movie. his best performance ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like. <laughs> The Give Pasha Stallone statement. a little backhand compliment. <laughs> you have yeah. to. And what the, the my favorite thing that Danny says in this whole thing, he's like, where are all the normal looking women, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Like this. Such a Bob thing to say. <laughs> They're no, all. I'd be like, this is a great blockbuster. Can I come back? He goes, he's like, no. He's like, because we're in a movie. That's why everybody looks like this. He's like, no, this is California. <laughs> 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 all the women are beautiful here. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. They're gorgeous. It's great. How many late fees would you have if you... If that, if that place existed. I would never leave because I'd bring everything back promptly because it would give me another excuse to talk to them. I just would rack up as much dollars so I can be at the counter for a long period of time with them. Arguing about <laughs> whether or not you're going to pay your late fees? Yeah. No, just let me rent one more. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I need my just so I can like, stand next to him a little That's bit. That's right. Well, the, Bob's uh, just standing there getting free smells like he's inside uh, <laughs> it's Jimmy like a scratch, John's. Scratch Jimmy and sniff. John. <laughs> free smells. Oh, she's pretty. You know, you walk past Subway <laughs> at Walmart and it smells really great. Yeah, you get at like Walmart? a whiff of like no. It's when you walk past Subway oh, at Subway Walmart. Subway at Walmart, guys. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I don't you know that I of... smell good at Walmart. No, <laughs> especially not the Antioch one. Well, maybe if you're in the candle aisle, yeah. that's the way you're at. <laughs> the The thing culminates in him when he's trying to convince him this is a movie. It culminates in him as they're driving through the neighborhood, going, "Jack, the bad guys are in there. Like yeah. that's the house." Yeah, and he stops and he gives this great speech. He's like. You should have my badge. All the training I've done, counterterrorism and uh, psychology of a suspect, and you know, this whole thing. You mean all I had to do is drive around and point at the house? Somebody's and go, house. The bad guys are in there. You've revolution. You've revolutionized police work, <laughs> modern police work as we know it. Yeah. Well, and it's great because yeah. they go up to the door. Yes. And he's still doing it, and he's <laughs> like, he's like, "Hello, sir. Are there any drug dealers here? Yeah, <laughs> I'd right. like to speak to the drug dealer of the house." And I love Arnold says his name wrong. He goes, you think you're funny, don't you? He's like, I know I am. I'm the famous comedian, Arnold Braunschweiger. Yeah. He's like, it's Schwarzenegger, dude. <laughs> like, <Yeah. it's> Braunschweiger, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's so this is when the guy that played Sub-Zero in Running Man comes to the door. Mako. Is that what's it, Tanako? I thought his name was Mako. Uh, no, it's Professor. Mako is a guy from Conan. You're talking about the butler? Yeah. He, he played Sub-Zero? Yeah, in Running Man. It was... Where's his name? Oh, oh I was thinking Professor. Mortal. You go on IMDb. It's Professor Toru Tanaka. Sorry, I was thinking Mortal Kombat Sub Zero. Oh no, no. Sub-Zero. I'm like, I don't. Where the hell did I get Mako from? That's the guy from Conan, the Wizard. Oh, okay. My apologies. Keep your Asian co-stars of Arnold Schwarzenegger straight. I could say <laughs> there's something. only two. I could say something right now, but you'll definitely delete it. <laughs> there's only two. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> One of the best scenes in the movie because after he asks him, you know, it's a beautiful day and we're out killing drug dealers. Are there any in the <laughs> yeah. house? Are there any in the house? We can take care of. I like that. That made me laugh. Uh, Charles Dance comes to the door. We get our first scene where Dance and Schwarzenegger. And what's cool about this scene is Schwarzenegger switches from BSing right. to serious yes. mode yeah. when he realizes that this is a real bad guy. Right. Right? Because he says, uh, you know, uh, I. We, what did he ask him when he came? Whatever he asks him, you know, so whether about take what, off the glasses. Take off the glasses. That's what it was. And he's like, who's asking? And he holds up his badge and says, the Tin Man. And this is where the standoff happens, right? Because he says, you know, suppose you hit the bricks. And he's like, no, they're the wrong color. And he summons his dogs, these killer dogs, right? Yeah, the ones that he right. snaps and they all do <laughs> they're a tripod. They're very well trained. <laughs> yeah. I That's honestly right. thought we were going to get to see Arnold Schwarzenegger punch a Rottweiler. I know. A stack of Watt, yeah. Rottweilers. He says, now, if I snap my fingers again, at some time tomorrow, you'll emerge from several canine recta. Yeah. Which is a gross thing to say. Sure. Mm-hmm. He says, uh, any questions? And this is the one of my favorite moments. Yeah, two of them. Why am I wasting time on a dime store putz like you <laughs> when I could be doing something much more dangerous, like rearranging my sock drawer? <laughs> and how are you going to snap your fingers after I've ripped off both of your thumbs? Dead serious. Yeah. It's so great. Because, and then he just lowers his glasses down and he says, have a nice day. And he's got the smiley right. face. And the whole tenor of the thing changes yeah. mm-hmm. at that moment. So did he just have that eye in and was just waiting to use that line all day? <laughs> That's or? What he waits around going, I can't wait to tell somebody. I, I can't wait. <laughs> like he's excited. He got a new eyeball. 
can't wait to use this eyeball. He's yes. just got a bunch of different eyeballs, so he can have different catchphrases and lines. Catchphrases, all that stuff. Uh, so they end up going back to his house where where Jack's daughter lives. Mm. But before they leave, Benedict overhears Danny going, I, that's the guy with the glass eye. I saw him on the terrace. And he's like this, tr- describing the yeah. opening scene of the movie. Yeah. How could he know all of it? Exactly. And so he goes, let's find out some more about this little friend of Slater's. Mm-hmm. And so when they go back to Jack's house, Jack, of course, has to dip out for a minute to go have him uh, to go back memory do lane. something to give the bad guys a chance to come in and take over. That's really what it is. Didn't they go back? To, oh, no. You're right. They yeah. haven't gone back to his apartment. Not yet. yet. Yeah. That's later when he gets fired. Uh, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. Uh, anyway, we meet Jack Slater's daughter, who's played by um, Bridget Wilson, Bridget Wilson, who is Sonya in Mortal Kombat. Yes. Another Mortal right? Kombat reference. Sure. And Veronica Vaughn in Billy so Madison. So hot. What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Shiny. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hear you. I've been physically abused in my ear. <laughs> That's assault, brother. No milk will ever be our milk. That Veronica Vaughn is <laughs> one <laughs> piece of ace. If I, you know what I'm saying. No, 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 you didn't. Well, not me personally, but a guy I know him and her got it. Oh, woo No, no, they didn't. Right, right, right. <laughs> you can imagine. You can imagine. All right. Two, four, seven. Move it or lose it. Get on the bus. All right. You can do Billy Madison all day. All day. I'll all turn this damn bus around. That'll end your precious little field trip pretty damn fast. How come we never do a Chris Farley movie yet? But there's plenty of bad Chris Farley movies. Oh, we can do too. they're all great. All right. Beverly Hills Ninjas comes to mind. Yeah. All right. Back to our last anyway, action hero. Back to the action hero. What's that? More ninja movies? More ninja movies. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, all right. So anyway. Jack Slater's got to dip out for a minute, and so it's just Danny Madigan and 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 uh, Sonya Blade there at the apartment <laughs> or the house, and Charles Dance shows up with a squad of goons, crack squad yeah. of goons, and uh, basically starts to interrogate Danny. And how do you know all this stuff about me? And I'm not going to go through all of them here because the sake of time. But almost every line that Charles Dance says is read perfectly. Yes, right. I mean, it's just like yeah. Don't play with with fire. You will get hurt. And like just the way is, I mean, I just it could go on, on, and have, on and on about him. I have killed people smarter and younger than you. Than you. That's, right? that's terrifying when a bad guy says that. Yes. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and Daniel convinces him to like, like double does a double twist on him and gets him to burn this fake money. Which puts up the different color because every yeah. piece of information given in this movie will be vital will in, be, just will be in just a moment. In just a moment. <laughs> Which is good writing. So it's yeah. a good writing. So he burns the, the money up the chimney and so as Jack pulls back in he sees the red smoke coming out of the chimney. So he knows. So hey, he what's knows up? what's up. And ends up busting through the ceiling of his own house. And making two guys shoot each other with their Uzis. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> and this ridiculous action scene. Oh, my gosh. The pulling <laughs> of the lamp and the, right and the cord. At, and but right before that, the dude is shooting him with an AK-47. He's as far from him as, as we are. We are, sure. And he just dives out of the way. Yeah. He's still pointing directly at him, shooting Nothing's Nothing. hitting him. No. Then he rips the electric cord out Again, of the lamp. The and trope. So, it shocks the guy into shooting him. in the chair. Yeah. In the chair, it's wonderful. It's great. What a, I mean, how smart was he to do something like that? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Don't and then intercut, up. intercut. Uh, Sonya Blade. Yes, kicking the dude in the nuts in the flipping, other in the bedroom, flipping him over into the shelving. Yeah, to make it, it sound it. like she's getting beat up. That yeah. was smart writing too. Yeah, that was very good. That's good stuff. And Arnold uh, ultimately kills everybody in the room because. That's don't, what he does. Don't give except up your for day job. the bad guy. The main <laughs> That's bad right. Guy. Except for, yeah, Charles Dance Benedict books it out of there. Um, and not before losing his eye. No, he leaves his eye behind purposefully because it's a bomb. Because it's right, a bomb. Right. Yeah. Right. Because later on, after spoilers, uh, spoilers <laughs> again, he's sitting season. there, and the guy, the real, the other cops are there, not cleaning up the body bags of all this yeah. stuff, and Jack's literally just sitting there, like all tired. And Daniel walks up with a notepad, and he's like, "Say this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which we all assume is the uh, which we all assume is the f bomb is the f bomb. We don't know, and he just looks over. And he's like, "I don't want to say it." <laughs> right? 
Because you can't, because this movie is PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite quick scenes is back when the, after he kills everybody, yeah. looks at his daughter's face, and he goes, where are you going? Got to catch the red eye. Got to catch the red eye. a bunch of somersaults off the roof. Oh, like, yeah, just like, parkours oh, off the side party of the... Parkours off the side. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. like Arnold a triple gainer. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just love that line, though. Got to catch the red eye. That's right. He had so many of them in this movie. It's good stuff. So Benedict and ultimately gets away, and Danny tries to play chicken with his bike. Kick ass, sixty three Continental right there. I love the, oh, the doors on those cars. Oh, you are talking about the bulletproof? Yeah, car they got away in. Yeah, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. His car, his car, Benedict's car, and he tries to. He's like, oh, I, I'm the, I'm gonna play chicken with the bad guy here, but he's just on a little, like, bicycle, <laughs> and ends up getting launched into the air, but uh, yeah, ultimately he's fine. Full right. ET. You caught that too? Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's ET. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course. But while they're, they're cleaning up, somebody finds Benedict's eye and they're like, they're dummies. So they're like, whoa, what does this say? We line up these we'll words. We line up these words together. And uh, vengeance is mine. Is that what yeah. it was said? Yeah, because you wouldn't spin it around. <laughs> you would just make sure you complete the puzzle. And that was. Uh, <laughs> that's a great point. That was also, he was, he played the guy that did the, the cop that had spun the thing around was also in uh, Die Hard 1 and Die Hard with a Vengeance. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It was, like I said, it was McTiernan that made the movie, so yeah. he brought, brought all those guys in. And it cuts from the explosions. of Jack's house explodes, and uh, <laughs> nobody dies. They just get wily coyotied, yeah, right? right. Blink, blink, blink. Jack's hair is still smoking. It cuts the to them. And they're at the lieutenant's desk, and his hair is still <laughs> smoking. Yeah. <laughs> And his like smoke is coming out of his ears. You can't understand a word he's Did saying. Did you catch that? I think that's English. <laughs> we'll see if this is clear enough. Well, not to rewind, you're fired. but that's also where Benedict finds the ticket because he takes. Yes, you're right. That's wallet. important to know is that as he's interrogating Danny, he goes through his wallet. He's like, "Oh, New York City, you're a long way from home." Yeah, and he ends up keeping the ticket. Right, not knowing, magic ticket. Not, not knowing, knowing what it is magical. at that point. But sure. yes, it's important to know that at this point, the bad guy has the ticket. Yes. Yeah. Did anybody right. catch that he took out his eye and still had an eye in his eye? Yeah, well, that's because... I was just like... Uh, they didn't They didn't go through the effects work of removing because his he, eye He digitally. pulls, I'm assuming, his eye out. Yeah. And he's now you can see his real eye. And yes. then he puts his... When he goes home and he's like listening to the news or whatever. So they do all these close-ups on his face without a glass eye. And I'm like, uh, so are these... Glass eyes just wrap around your eyeball, or what do they? they well, they're full circles, so that you would say no, yeah, right? Full, but that's why it doesn't years, make any yeah. sense. It was just a movie mistake on that. I think so. Yeah. So I was just like, does anybody else catch that? Because I, was yeah, like, this looks weird. That one probably weird. had a cactus on it, so it was his cacti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome. All right, so Jack gets fired. <laughs> no, how many said, times he's been fired? It's so many times. Because even Danny's like, "You'll get your badge back." He just pulled it this time because he destroyed more of the city than usual, right? And, yeah. And they go to Jack's apartment, which is the oh. saddest apartment. It's this fantastic apartment I've ever <laughs> seen. It's he so just, sad. He walks through the door and just lays three rounds into the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no furniture, but he's got a fully stocked closet. Dude, that fully stocked closet is all the same clothes. Yeah, it's wearing. great. It's his red shirt, like you have. Yeah. His brown jacket and his jeans. Yep. He's like, how'd you know there's a guy in there? There's always a guy in the closet. It's cost me a fortune in closet doors. Well, he's pulling, <laughs> as the guy's like falling, he's doing like a Mr. Rogers. He's just yeah. getting changed into a new jacket. Yeah. And new, yeah. And his, so it's his, great. his bed's on the floor with just box spring and a mattress. And that's Yeah, it. there's nothing else in the apartment. It's the saddest thing. Well, he obviously, he would normally live in the house when he's employed. Yeah. This is just your down-on-the-luck apartment, you know? Right. This is my sad apartment. And, uh, and the thing is... This is where we kind of get a peek behind the curtain with Jack for the first time, right? Where he says, you know, I don't really have a life, right? And my wife is happily remarried. She's I, I pay a girl to call me at the station so the guys think I have a private life. Like, yeah. this, I've, I've got nothing. All I ever wanted to be was a decent cop, but I keep getting wrapped up in these crazy adventures. And here's the thing, Danny, they're, it's getting harder, right? And he says, well, it's got to get hard. These are the sequels. It's got to get harder. Mm. Right. You can't die till the grosses go down. Right. <laughs> And Jack at this point is still not convinced. But that he's in a movie. That he's in a movie. Right. Daniel then says to him the fact that there's a funeral for a guy named Fart coming right. up, right? Yes. Because right. Great gag. Because 
as Arnold's packing up his desk when he's fired, uh, F. Murray May- Abraham, the guy that played the guy from um, Amadeus, Mozart, right? The movie comes over and says, hey, I'm working this funeral for Leo Lafarte at this hotel. Is that know. why there's all the Mozart jokes in there? Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you hadn't seen Amadeus, all that stuff will fly over your head. Yeah, it did. Because there was a famous movie in the 80s that they won all these Oscars for, and he's the guy that kills Mozart in the movie. Got it. Okay. And so it, it was really the only thing though. that he did. And so later on, when Danny says, the guy killed Mozart for crying out loud, and he's like, Mo who? Yeah. <laughs> Zot. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, anyway, uh, Danny is the one that triggers something in Jack to go, we got to go check out this funeral, right? And they're driving, they're driving to the place and he's basically giving them the plot. He's like, okay, think about this, right? It, who took the shot that killed Leo Lafarte? It was supposed to be met for the Torellis. Would it have been Benedict? Right. Would he have missed? No, unless you wanted to miss. So Leo Lafarte was killed on purpose because he was really, really fat. And so what they're going to do is they're going to stuff him with TNT. The whole Torelli mob will be at the funeral and boom, they're going to blow him up. He's like, no, no, there's already been a dozen explosions in this movie. It's going to be something. Yeah. Else. Oh, Daddy, yeah. don't start that again. <laughs> right. He's like, oh, it's nerve gas. Yeah. A three guy canisters. named. Yeah. Three canisters. A guy named Fart. What does that mean? It means Leo Lafont is going to pass gas one more time. Yes. <laughs> right. Again, the gags, the two gags that come from this are just fantastic. And he's telling all of this as he's driving down the wrong side of the road. Right. With cars right. all right. around cars him. Just, <laughs> which cuts back to the joke of him saying you got to, you know, not go on a busy road. That's right. Never, ever do it in heavy traffic. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. So they get to the hotel. And, of course, what does every action movie do? You tell the kid, wait in the car. Yeah. Right? Yep. He's like, what happens if something happens? There's a gun in the glove compartment. <laughs> <laughs> this was my daughter's favorite scene. Which was it? laughed so hard when he hit the button, all the guns fell out. Oh, my gosh. Like, She's nine just, guns fall out all of them. Of them. <laughs> They're all the ones that he keeps on his body. <laughs> she he just, just That's laughed. where he keeps them when he doesn't have them. Right. And so he uh, runs up, and there's F. Murray Abraham in the front. He's like, He's like, oh, that's why he tells him the, the plot. And he's like, yeah, that's why it's happening. All right, let's go around back. And they run around. And before they even get all the way around the building, Arnold stops and goes, who are you working for? We both know there's no side entrance to this hotel. Like, True. like everybody yeah. should just know everything about right. this hotel that everyone knows there's no side entrance. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you look at F. <laughs> Abraham as an individual, he's not a good guy he's a no. bad guy because of his you know he has a bad guy face he plays a bad guy in pretty much everything yeah. he does he's a shooter mcgavin right absolutely he looks fancy yes. but he's he's a he, you yeah, know he's, he's a skis yeah mm-hmm. and so how how this works then is he ends up handcuffing jack slater they're like in this construction area on the side where there's no yeah. entrance and danny does not wait in the car but instead takes a gun and ends up getting the drop on uh Practice. Practice. Thank you. I could keep on calling him F. Murray Abraham. Yeah. Practice. That's his name in the movie. But again, just like a callback to when he was in his apartment, he's unable to do anything with this bad guy, and the guy just takes the gun straight out of his hand and chains him up with Jack, right? Yeah. And this is where... Makes him chain himself to the pipe. Yeah, makes him chain himself to the pipe, just yeah. like in the apartment. Right. Uh, and this is where he's trying to explain to Jack, like, this guy is, uh, you know, he killed Mozart and <laughs> Amadeus, like... I don't, you know, and it even, and he says it to he's the bad guy. Yes. Thank you. He's the bad guy. I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. Sorry. Well, there's a lot well, going there's on. There's a lot going on. Going there's so on. many side stories going on, but regardless, uh, he kind of rips on him for being, for doing the bad guy, the movie bad guy. That's what I was trying to get to. And he's, he's, he's explaining. He's, he's, monologuing. he's monologuing. Yes, monologuing. Yes, exactly. That's it. He's like, if you had just pulled the trigger, we both would have been dead. But no, you're stupid, right? Right. <laughs> so at this point, he's like, all right, somebody told me I talked too much, and he's just going to shoot them both. But yeah. Whiskers the cat shows up. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Shoots him. Yeah. And takes them out. Right. And so we get they get up to the to the funeral. And my favorite scene with Arnold in the entire movie. He puts on a hat on so he doesn't get recognized. So what he doesn't get recognized, everyone's in black. They're all these Italians. And he just puts on a a black hat. hat. This roof had to be specially constructed because that was so many people on that roof. That's what I'm saying, dude. And so Arnold runs up. And it's so stupid. He walks up to the body and he's like, 
he was a great man, a flatulent man, right? Like <laughs> yeah. he's trying to be respectful. And, and this guy's in a baseball cap. He's all in a baseball cap. And the guy looks kind of up at him. He's like, like did he say that? Oh, help me out. Get, get me out of here. <laughs> this man is alive. This we man is not dead. <laughs> yeah. I'm a doctor. Straps him to his shoulders. He pulls him. He's like, is there a doctor in the house, please? A, and of course, there's a dude that's yeah. like, I'm a doctor. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Knocks him out with a doctor. Guy's head. Uh, check his chin. The doctor is fainted. Can anyone help this man here? <laughs> <laughs> and what does he say, James? <laughs> Look, an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. The whole thing is so stupid. <laughs> says, You're a doctor? Check his chin. <laughs> the doctor has fainted. <laughs> and Look, it's all it's funny because of the, his voice is what make all these things he's shouting so dumb. Well, in the meantime, he sends the kid to go operate a crane. Right. Yes, and, well, because well, of course he would do that. To go well, get yeah, but he get scares everybody off with the gun, <laughs> right? Which is a callback to him doing that in the beginning of the movie, right? Right. But a couple times on our episodes, I've talked about how one of my least favorite tropes is people being able to operate machinery they've got no idea how to use. Right? Sure, right? Like in Load on Dirty Shame with the garbage disposal or whatever these people do in these movies. Yeah, and so here is this kid operating. He's like, this, how hard can it be? How hard can this. it be? There's like 19 levers yeah. and an untold number of switches. And he just, within a few minutes, is expertly maneuvering this thing around. Yeah. So they know. <laughs> so they know. It's not just everything that we thought that we are so freaking keen because we noticed this. They must have not realized that oh, when sure. they made this move. They know. <laughs> they know exactly. They know. They know. And now they know that we know that they know. Right. And that's what, and knowing is half the battle. Yo, Joe. That's right. So Arnold ultimately gets to the edge of the roof and no one's buying his shtick anymore. And even grandmas are pulling Uzis yes. out of their purses because it's a mob, right? And uh, he's at the edge and he just raises his hand and sends uh, Leo Lafarte over the edge. Yes. Who gets caught perfectly and expertly by Daniel on the edge of this crane hook. hook yeah. 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 And then Arnold <laughs> has to run through a hail of gunfire mm -hmm. into the elevator, comes down, the elevator opens up, and there's dudes running towards him in the hallway, and a helicopter. Well, it's a glass elevator. It's a glass so elevator on the outside, on the outside of, the building. of the building. Right. This helicopter comes down, starts unloading their mini guns through the, through the elevator, mows out the other side of the building explodes out yeah it's just in, it's just kills chaos. everybody in the hallway chaos. doesn't touch him at all right but there's this great shot when the elevator starts to tip and oh, fall yeah, over that's really cool and arnold and there's a guy inside is like there. flying yeah. off it and trying to catch it and then that's obviously a stunt guy but a great shot nonetheless but then they get the close-up on arnold while he's hanging on to the thing and it, and it snaps <laughs> and it just comes off and he's just like <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah, that was like staring, <laughs> staring off. Just oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Yeah, throwback to Die Hard. That That's shot. the Hans Gruber show. Well, it's yeah. the same director, and it's literally the exact same angle, and it's the same face that Alan Rickman made. The oh, as he's the dropping. oh crap face, right? As yeah, he's and falling, the Darth Vader death. Yeah, the whole thing. But again, Danny swings in with the crane with and, fart <laughs> with on there, fart on yeah. there yep. and he's able to catch Arnold and they drop him into the La Brea tar pits. That was can I rewind? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I want to rewind one minute okay. when they they set the bomb off oh, how you by set it pulling off. his finger. <laughs> <laughs> the fart joke. That's right. Of pulling your finger, and that's how they're that's gonna right. make the bomb go. I forgot off. that Benedict, before yeah. Arnold got there, walked up to the body, pulls the finger, and pulls the finger to yes. start the countdown. Just another great fart gag. Great. I mean, <laughs> it's the little touches that make these movies really great. Uh, I don't know how much science you guys know around tar pits. <laughs> But or tar in general. Or tar you're, in general. You're going to drown the second you fall. In Most it. people you, can't wipe off tar so easily. <laughs> <laughs> tar actually sticks to some people. <laughs> yeah. he, now you can see when the way they shot it, there, there's a lane of just black water because you right. can, can kind of see where the bars are if you watch. Yeah. That's why he's got like a clear lane to swim through. But it's hilarious because you cannot swim through tar or even really move through tar. But and, he's so strong. Right. Jack Slater 
can tar cannot stop. Right. An Air entire slider. bomb goes off, and all it does is go brrr, like a giant bubble up yes. in the tar, but it can't even break through. Right. Which Jack's is the like next best gag. Doing a breast stroke, you know, through the tar. Silent but deadly. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then another. Mean, meanwhile, during this, his daughter <laughs> is incoming. Like, not on her way. No. We're going to go with full incoming <laughs> in a K5 blazer, just <laughs> ripping straight across through everything. Like, not taking the road no. around no. the driveway, nothing. Just straight across. Yes. Hey, I heard, you, I heard you were going to be here. <laughs> thought you might need some new clothes. Uh, hold on. Anybody else think this is very convenient? Oh, Exceedingly. absolutely. <laughs> This is the moment the movie shifts because essentially at this point, Benedict goes back to his mansion and kills Vivaldi, sure. who he's tired of. Figures I, out how I to use the magic. he's already seeing the ticket's effects. He's not sure yet because yeah. he'd already touched the wall and was like, hmm. But he didn't know exactly what was going on. But there. now he goes back there and Vivaldi's like, how'd everything go? Oh, it was great. It was this. It was that. It was this. Oh, tell me about it. You know, Because he yeah. wants a full play-by-play replay on all of this. Right. But doesn't want to go out of the house. No. Uh, <laughs> So he's giving him the replay, and then no, he you, asks another question. He's like, no, I'm done. He's like, no, you pull a 360 on me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, if I I'm pull the 360, <laughs> I'd be right back where I started. Trust me. Boom. Shoots yeah. him. Okay. And he's like, now he's, now, he, here's how you realize he knows he's in a movie. He starts breaking the fourth wall, and now he's talking directly to camera. Right. He starts going, if that little turd, Daniel Manigan, can travel through parallel worlds, I can travel through parallel worlds, right? Yeah. If God was a villain, he looks directly at the camera, he'd be me. He realizes now whether we did, whether he poked his head out before and we just didn't see it or whatever. Right. He knows now what's happening. Right. And this is right after he says that. I, I don't know how they did this, but one of the greatest <laughs> entrances for a vehicle of all time. The thing crashed through. It looked like the second story of the mansion. <laughs> yeah. And then down. <laughs> down. One tire's up on the marble statue. Yep. And then it's a gagoosh. And it's right. Like, I feel like Charles Dance was here. And the grill of this truck it's right next was to like him. right here. Perfect. And he just pulls his <laughs> hand out with a gun. Right. And says, knock it off. The truck also looks perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Mint condition. Opens the door around his that, hand, pointing the gun. That was a sweet truck. It was a cool truck. That it wasn't a it wasn't a monster truck. It no, was just it was just lifted. It was a, it was a lifted lifted big wheel. Yeah, seventy five blazer. Oh, it was awesome with the top off. The perfect Jack Slater flame paint job. <laughs> flame paint job. We don't. I unfortunately get to see that much more of it, but I loved it. And he yeah, he pulls the gun on him. He does this great joke where he's like. This is for killing my, or this is for blowing up my cousin Frank's house and punches him in the face. Yes. This is for blowing up my ex-wife's house. Smacks his yes. hand. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> this is for my daughter's black eye. And he like grabs him to throw him and ends up throwing him into the butler into and they the both future. disappear. Yeah. He threw him into the future. <laughs> <laughs> Through the wall. <laughs> and he's like, usually I, that leaves a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is where Arnold realizes, he's like, I don't, I'm not worried that you're crazy. I'm worried that you're right. Yeah. But what yeah. happens if we go, we come back. He's like, we got to just do it. Hands him his gun. The hell with it. And they walk through into New York and the great contrast again, between where they were and where they are now is brilliant. Yeah. And it was such a smart idea to set the last third of the movie in the real world. Mm -hmm. After you'd set up all this other stuff, because now you can play with the other side of these jokes where <laughs> none of the things he thinks you should be able to do work are going to work. Right. And then on the flip side, the bad guy loves it here. Uh -oh. Well, <laughs> my favorite. Scene. And I will Some say great bad guy stuff here. Oh, what, yeah. What I love about it and kind of what to what you're saying is, yeah. is you're you get a feeling through the whole movie of this weird parallel world now that's yeah. bizarre and in a movie, you are now believing. You are in it. Yeah. So the moment we go into the real world, it flips it on you, and you start going, well, now, crap, how are they going to get out? Like, you almost start to feel for the characters. Yeah. You're like, wait a second, how are they going to get out of this now? Because now they're in a whole different, the yeah. rules are different. Well, they, you know? they all felt very safe before. Right. Yeah. And now or not realizing how safe they had it. Yeah, and right. now there's nothing but danger. Yeah. And one of the first things that happens is they run out of the movie theater and Arnold punches his fist through a car window. Yeah, thinking you just <laughs> he's like, Oh, that actually he's like, hurt. Yeah. 
Well, well, of course it's going to hurt when you punch a car window in the real world. Then he shoots. Why didn't you give me this information yeah. earlier? That's right. Yeah. He shoots the cab. He's like, here's another explosion for your movie. And he's, I think the taxis are bulletproof. <laughs> right. He's like, no, these things don't just explode after you <laughs> shoot them with two bullets. Yeah, because he keeps trying to shoot it. Yeah, that's right. The taxi does not explode. And he ends up playing chicken in the alleyway with a checkered cab and an 89 Mercury Sable. <laughs> yep. Which he at least was smart enough to know how to drive her side airbag. Yeah. Well, Danny was trying to tell him not to do it. He's like, don't play chicken. This is the real world. Kicks Danny out of the car. And they drive at each other and have a full-on head-on well, yeah, collision. Well, yeah, the, uh, the butler's driving that. Yeah. Yeah. And he's dead. Yeah. On the hood. Yes. Comes he's through the windshield. Dead as a toast. dead. They were both in it, right? But he yeah. escaped into wherever else with the ticket. With the ticket, right. He disappeared out of the back seat. But he's like, you know, who is dumb? I knew there was an airbag, and that one didn't have any. But how are they going to find Benedict, right? This is the issue that they're in now because he can move freely in and out of these worlds. And so, at least for the for the meantime, he goes back to the movie theater and introduces Nick to Jack, right? Mm. Tell him that the ticket worked. Tell him that the ticket worked, so now he wants it so he can go see Marilyn Monroe and all that other stuff, yeah. right? But uh, Yeah, I would. He's like, uh, not going to happen because Benedict has the ticket. And then he takes Arnold to his mom's house. Yep. <laughs> And they stay up all night, and I'm like, oh, looks like Danny's got a new stepdad. That's something. <laughs> Very love, uncomfortable. They love yes. classical music. Now, this is fantastic yeah. to me because he's always got this, you know, rock and roll, you know, yes. soundtrack to everything he's done in his whole life in this movie. Yep. He comes out here and is like, what is this? What is <laughs> like, I like it's this. It's Mozart. The guy practice killed? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jack. Right? Like he's going to correct him, but he just says, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's the guy practice count. <laughs> and, uh, and Arnold looks very uncomfortable in that kitchen because it's about as big as he is. I don't know if you see the way he's sitting in there, but he's got to have like one of his arms on one of like the kitchen shelves. Yes. And like his shoulders like underneath another shelf over here. Like there's just no room in this place at all. You're getting this quite giant human. That's what it feels yeah. like to be me. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's a burden sometimes being as big and huge as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, I'm just like diametrically as big as him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Inevitably, they start walking. They're literally wandering, or wandering around. They, Danny has the idea that maybe he's going in and out of movies. So they're just walking to thousands of the movie theaters, theaters all around New York. And they see him get into a cab out of a movie theater. Jack tries to do the running on top of the taxis thing, ends up on the ground. Works poorly. Works poorly. He disappears again out of that cab. But they get the newspaper right. that he had, which Arnold Schwarzenegger's name crossed off on it. Sure. And so they figure out that the bad guy is trying to circumvent taking out Jack Slater by taking out Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Who then, therefore, will take out Jack Slater. Mm -hmm. And so now you've got jack and now the actor who plays jack is being brought into the plot yes right there's a quick rewind real quick yeah. of one of my favorite moments with benedict oh when yeah he, talk this about is when it. he realizes like this is a great world for bad guys mm -hmm. oh you yeah know. oh so when he shoots the guy and then he waits shoots, yeah he shoots the guy and waits so he's, he sees a crime can being committed and the guy's like take his shoes take right. his shoes take his shoes and he's waiting for police take his shoes and the hooker walks up to him and, he, and she's like want to have a party he's like how old are you <laughs> you know like he's just thoroughly really disgusted by right. this world <laughs> he's like moment. what is this world <laughs> right and he Wait a so minute. he tests out the theory like kurt said he goes he walks up to this guy his mechanic and he just shoots him and then he's trying to you know no no I have just committed the murder. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> cares. Shut up. I yeah. just shot somebody and I did it on purpose. Shut up down there. Yeah. It's a great scene. Yeah. It's a very good scene. He fires a gun off a couple more times. Yes. But it was just like. No, but it's great to show the contrast of the worlds that we're in here. Right? Now he's excited to be in this world. Because and yes. how much yeah. more evil he's going to be now. Yes. Oh, sure. It's just terrifying. Wait, there's no like. Sirens. The police yeah. don't show up. It's immediate, you know. That was, right. That was good. Perfect. That was good writing. No, it's great. It was, it was a great, great scene. And so the finale of the movie basically takes place here at the premiere for Jack Slater Four. Right. This is we, we was set up earlier in the movie. This is the opening weekend for this movie. Yeah. And Arnold is there in New York to go to the premiere mm -hmm. with 
all I mean there's so many people that for show the up. Jack Slater movies right? for the Jack yeah. Slater movie David and basically Wayans. the premise is what's yeah. his name's gonna kill Arnold Schwarzenegger so that Jack yeah won't, don't won't exist yeah right yeah and so Chevy Chase is there Damon Wayne Damon Wayans. MC Hammer <laughs> Slate of uh, Five soundtrack. JCVD. J- yes. yes. We got a yes. Jean-Claude Van Damme sighting in yes. here. Yes. I wouldn't have missed his premiere for a second. Jim Belushi saying how Arnold turns his wife on. He just wants to be there when it happens. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. <laughs> right. He back He's from, like, I don't mind him myself. He was really the like Santa him. Claus in Jingle All the Way with Arnold, and he did Red Heat with him, so they're buddies. And yeah, Arnold, all of Arnie's friends are Well, even here. his wife at the time, Maria Shriver, was like dropping jokes of like, right. don't mention the Planet Hollywood thing. Right. It's so tacky. cares about your restaurant. <laughs> there was yeah. one person I wish was in there. <laughs> Who's that? Bruce Willis. Willis or Stallone. Willis or Stallone. Yeah. Well, Stallone was in there in like a punching in bag joke. joke he he but, let him be there. In the but thing. I'm yeah. talking like, Full fledged cameo yeah. from Bruce Willis because because it was the diehard guy and that at that time awesome. Bruce Willis and Schwarzenegger were neck and neck in box office. No, that's true, that's so. true. That would have been cool, but it was it was cool to see all of his buddies there yes. show up at the premiere and all this stuff. And here's Arnold playing himself, or at least a dramatized version of himself. <laughs> in this movie, we only kill forty eight people. Unlike the last movie, we killed one hundred and nineteen people. Well, the, <laughs> we want the fans to know that we do care. That's right. <laughs> and how funny was it, MC Hammer? Like, hey man, do you want to talk about the uh, the, the soundtrack? The, yeah, the soundtrack to <laughs> yeah. Slater Five. Are you <laughs> are we still down for that? You know. Do well, you, he says that to Jack Slater, who's right, not Arnold, right? Right. And right. Uh, Jack like what the frick are you talking yeah. about? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, why you got to be like that with me? Slater gets there and he he goes up to the concession lady and he's like, "Where am I sitting? Where am I sitting?" He points at his own yeah, he face. Pulls his hat off so he pulls looks his at hat like, off. "Oh." And he's super excited. It's yeah. the Superman glasses effect. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just his hat with the hat. <laughs> and it's important to also know that Benedict has been retrieving bad guys from these other movies. And so he pulled the Ripper right. out of Slater to Three job. to do this job. The guy from the beginning of the movie that that had the his son killed his son in the end of Jack Slater Three. Yeah, that's where we get the flash forward. We finally see what happened yeah. in focus. Is when Jack shot the Ripper, he fell off the roof, but he grabbed his son and pulled him off with him. It is heartbreaking. It is. It's terrible. It is. And even Jack talks about that. He says, you know, I'm just when I found out he was a fictional character, he's like, yeah, let's throw his son off a building, right? Mm-hmm. He's fictional, so who cares? It was like Truman Show before Truman Show. I think yeah. uh, Elton John wrote a song about that. Yeah. What's that? It's uh, Don't Let Your Son Go Down With Me, I think was <laughs> oh my the... gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the audience clap. That was great. <laughs> I think that's the first clap I've gotten on a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. All right, so... Arnold gets up there. He's trying to find where, where or say, this is where it gets confusing. Jack Slater is trying to find where Arnold is sitting. Sure. Okay? Meanwhile, that's which is the lower balcony. Meanwhile, the Ripper and Danny are up on the upper balcony. Yeah. And right as the Ripper is about to throw his axe down to kill Schwarzenegger below him, Danny yells, he brought back the Ripper, Jack. He brought back the Ripper. And Jack reaches up and shoots at him enough to... He doesn't kill the Ripper, but, you know, ruins the plan, so to speak. Sure. Right as he's about to shoot, Schwarzenegger tackles himself, tackles Jack Slater to the ground, thinking it's like some rando dude wielding yeah. a gun, yeah. some random shooter. And then he recognizes. He's like, oh, you're one of the best stuntman in the business. Yeah. That's right. You know, you're one of the best celebrity lookalikes I've ever seen. I want to hire you for my next movie. Right. Yeah. You're going to let me know when you're going to do something like this. That's right. He's <laughs> like, we could get you shopping center openings and like yeah. all this stuff. He's going to book him in Meanwhile, places. Meanwhile, Ripper's like grabbing his axe, and, <laughs> which I thought was awesome when he yes. dr- uh, rips it into Dove. the curtain. Oh, it yes. slides, and then slides style. down. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Tom Noonan awesome. doesn't get enough credit. Like the bad guys in this movie, Noonan and uh, Charles yeah. Dance, were <laughs> phenomenal villains. Yes. Uh, again, too, we got Noonan actually as Noonan there at yes. the premiere, <laughs> and his agent sees the Ripper and tries to pull the Ripper off to the side, like, "Hey, what are you doing? You're trying to get typecast as a tax murderer and everything you ever do from now." Did Jack so Nicholson show up to the premiere as Batman as the Joker? I don't think so. When when the Ripper shows up and the dudes from Entertainment Tonight are there, and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Um, I thought I might kill someone." Yeah. <laughs> So, totally deadpan. <laughs> Let's see if we can ask him a question. Oh, oh, oh yes. Stuff. Very well done. So they, of course, 
because it's the Ripper, they end up on the roof. And yeah. it's just, during a rainstorm. During a rainstorm. Yeah. And it's the end of Slater 3 all over again because he's got Danny Madigan instead of his son this time. one of my time, favorite scenes. Right? And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, we've done this scene before, Jack, right? Yeah. He's like, let's see. Uh, you say what you say, and then I... Uh, you know, I'm getting bored. Why don't we just skip to the end? And he just chucks, chucks Daniel the kid right over, yeah. right over the side, and we all think that's it for Danny. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and Jack ends up electrocuting him. Yes, he picks up the axe. Great. Oh no, he throws the axe at Jack. It misses. He pulls it out of the wall, and now he's rushing the Ripper with his yeah, own he's axe. He's like doing a death march charge at him. Yeah, and Which the whole he time did the Matrix duck. The whole time he's the like, axe again. he's like. Bring come, it, on, Jack, come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Bring Jack. It. Right. He's taunting him. And then he just swings. Into this, like, junction box or whatever down here. And then lays up onto the ledge of the building and electrocutes him. And Ripper's like, I'll be back. That's right. Slater's like, the hell you will. <laughs> That's right. He uses his own catchphrase against him. It's great. But he gets to save Danny where he didn't get to save his son. Mm. Right. And Danny's hanging from the side of the building. And there's this. On a gargoyle or something. Moment like where it's actually tense because jack doesn't know if he's gonna be able well, to save him he's in he, the real world he has to like gingerly get down right. there and he's holding on to this barely and it was just like oh my gosh Sopping wet cable right you know and he says like he's trying to say believe in me right he's like let go i will i will catch you right mm-hmm. trust me it's a great scene yeah, it's a great scene and he does and he and he does catch him and <laughs> throws him over the just, some, just what is that freaking one arm him, him. Like Kareem Abdul Jabbar hook shots this guy. <laughs> I mean, think of it. It's Arnie and like this 75 pound kid. No, I'm sure he could. I think my arm is out of the but socket. But that's what's funny is he gets back up the top and he's like, I think my shoulder's out of the socket. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> Whereas if it, that had been an action movie, he would have just like done a flip up onto the roof and with yeah, been he would have parkoured right up there. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. But Benedict shows up on the roof. Right at the worst possible moment. Which misses them, which I think is yes. interesting because it's the real world. It's the real world. Yeah. He misses them. They're hiding behind this thing, and he just keeps taking shots. And he gives this great speech about, <laughs> you want Dracula? Hold on. I'll fetch him. And it's just so well acted, and he's flipping the, mm-hmm. the ticket around, and he's like, how about a nightmare with Freddy Krueger? Or Surprise uh, party with Adolf Hitler. That's Hannibal, right. Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter will do the catering. And he's given this great speech. He says, you know why? They're lining up to get here, Jack. And you know why? Because here, the bad guys can win. Right? Yep. Yeah. It's like a commentary, too, on like the real world also right. at the same time. Yeah. Right? Like, why, does, why do these guys love our, our like, where we live? Yes. But it was, it was <laughs> a good commentary like how they filmed it and written it and yeah. got it into the movie was done smartly. Not like today where it's ham fisted into your face. Right. It was smartly written. It was very smartly written. It wasn't preachy. The film. Yeah. Cause it wasn't preachy. Thank you. But Arnold ends up taking one right to the chest because Benedict leaves a chamber empty and he clicks yeah. the gun. He thought he was, Oh, you made the movie mistake. You forgot to reload. Yeah. Right. But yeah. he didn't No, Jack. I just left one chamber empty shoots him. And there's Daniel's redemption moment. Again, faced with a bad guy. Yeah. And this time he fakes like his, yo, you broke my arm and he's crying or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's standing over Jack. He's going to kill Jack and mm-hmm. do the coup de gras. And Daniel like drop kicks this guy. <laughs> Some sort of sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> and and, uh, and just, in, just in time for uh, Jack to grab his gun or he tosses his gun to Jack mm-hmm. and he points it at him and he's, like, no, I'm going to get out of here again. But the ticket has stopped working. No sequel for you. And, and shoots just, him in the eye. Boom. Shoots him right in the eye. It's yeah. such a great moment. And the fact that that cool action moment happened in the real world was fantastic to me, right? Like, they still got to have their tropey yeah. good guy moment. Catchphrase from Arnold. Bad guy dies. Yeah. I didn't know... I didn't know it was his eye that exploded. Yeah, I was when I was a kid and throughout until just yesterday where I realized what he shot. Oh yeah, I was just like that was brilliant. Oh yeah, yeah. man, it's great. And now they're he's Daniel's got to get him back to the you know because he's not going to survive. The paramedics are working on Jack and they're like shaking their heads yeah, at no each way. other. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. He's like get him back to where this is just a flesh wound, right? Like we got to get him back to the movies. Yep, yeah, and they're all looking at him like he gets the gun. He's like they all. Always run away. Yes. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile the ticket them. falls outside of Ian McKellen's Grim Reaper. Movie. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Did, I, I don't know how many people don't realize that Ian McKellen did a scene with Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> in a movie before, right? 
Like yeah. just two people you don't ever think are going to be in a scene together. Gandalf and Arnold. <laughs> I was thinking Mr. Freeze and Yeah, or Magneto. Mr. Freeze and Magneto. Yeah, Either way. Yeah, that, that, that is, wow. But <laughs> from the seventh seal, from the seventh seal, death comes out and it's played by Ian McKellen. This is important because as they get Arnold back into the movie theater and Daniel's like, it's got to work. He thinks it's going to work without the ticket, right? Mm-hmm. Death walks in and uh, said he was just curious because Jack wasn't on any of his list because he's fictional. Well, yeah, uh, Daniel is like, I'm getting sick of Death's choices because Death took his father at a yeah. young age, didn't know him, stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, I'm just, I'm getting sick of this. And it's like, you think this is, my, I'm not, I'm not here to take him. I'm just curious because he's not on any of my lists. Right. Like, that's cool. It's cool. But he says, you, can you help him? He's like, no, I don't do fiction. But he, he goes, if I were you, I'd be looking for the other half of the ticket. Yeah. And it's such a great moment because at least I don't know about everybody else. But for me, I am assuming a lot of people totally forgot about the fact that the, the ticket was ticket torn in half. was in the box. Yeah. was like right there. And so that was like brilliant. He goes and again, this is Daniel's one move, drop kicks the ticket box. <laughs> Gets the ticket there, and ultimately it works, and it lights up the whole room, and he's able to get Jack back into mm-hmm. the movie. And the doctor shows up in the police station with whiskers. And what is this crap? This, this is not even a flesh. flesh That's right. <laughs> he's fine. And uh, they and have it, a touching moment. It's a touching moment, leaves, and it's yeah. sad because you know they're not going to see each other anymore. Right. And so he has to leave, go back to the real world. And as it's this great shot at the end of the movie, as he's pulling over the horizon and he's just waving. You know, with his hand, but before that, he goes and he screams at the lieutenant. <laughs> he punches his door out. He punches the door out, and he's like, it's working again. Right? Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that door is going to come out. I'm going to measly undeserved paycheck. You tangle up and down my Hershey Highway. Shut up. I don't care who goes what to your Hershey Highway. And stop shouting. I'm not deaf. <laughs> it's a great scene yep. where he basically. I want a garden. I don't want to shoot people anymore. I don't want to shoot bro. people and be a <laughs> more and all this stuff. You know why you're doing this? Because you're the comic relief. And we're all on movie. So shut up. All right, guys. Roll credits. Roll credits. It's time as we always do. And we've taken a little bit longer than we usually do. But this is one of those movies. There's a lot. Because it was surprisingly deep. It seems like a, on a level like a surfacey dumb action movie. But there's so many layers to this thing. It's hard to talk about it quickly. Without talking about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So, as we always do, guys, we are going to give some awards and some flowers to Last Action Hero because it certainly didn't get any at the time it came out. All it got was derided. And it's still, tragically, underwater on audience scores and with the critics and all of that stuff. So, uh, we'll start, as we always do, with the Will Patton Award for Intensity. And joining us today is Mr. John Paul Dozier as our Patreon play along, he's going to give us his picks here for the awards. And so for the Will Patton Award for Intensity, which direction did you guys end up going? Lieutenant. Lieutenant Decker. I did too. I went Captain Marble Mouth. That's what I called him because I wasn't sure of his name. Did you do it? Yep. Okay, and so did did, uh, Mr. Dozier here. He said he was supposed to play the hard-ass police boss that is always yelling at the main character, and he did it well. Those were his comments. So everybody picked Frank. I actually didn't pick Frank, <laughs> but obviously he will win the Will Patton Award because everybody sure. did. I just I picked Charles Dance. Yes. I just which one was you know, he? The Benedict. Benedict. Oh, okay, you know, gotcha. Especially once he got into the real world. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So and just thought he took it. I thought like in in the vein of a Alan Rickman or a Raul Julia just took this part in this dumb movie super seriously yep. and really did a good job. So uh, now we go on to the Michael Dudikoff trash can full of dirt award, which is our award for the worst actor. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, before we started, this might be hard to do because it's I'll say a spoof light. It's like a half spoof satire, half serious movie. And so it's hard to know who's hamming it up on purpose and who's actually not doing well. But for me, I picked Professor Toru Tanaka. I mean, <laughs> the guy that played Sub-Zero in Running Man was the butler for Benedict. And uh, he just was, to me, he couldn't spit a single line out. He was walking around like, Humpty Dumpty. I just didn't. Well, think and even when they were like uh, his pool line, when they yeah. were like, uh, you know, you need me to do anything? Yeah, yeah, I didn't understand. And what he was said. just like, he's like, the pool could yeah, use some the attention. Pool could have some attention. Yeah, exactly. And so. he's like, very good. And it just kind of <laughs> like hobbles away. That was for me. I don't know what you guys think. 
I I'm gonna piggyback off of you because I had this dilemma yesterday. I couldn't find a trash can full of dirt in this movie because I was like, man, everybody's and Clinton and I were That's talking about we this. this. We're just morning. like, yeah, everybody in this movie is really great. I didn't even think of sub. I didn't even think of the guy that played Sub Zero, which I can't say is you know his real name. I apologize. Tanaka. But. Tanaka. Thank you. Um, couldn't like even the think wrestler. Tatanka. <laughs> Tatanka. <laughs> <Tatonka. laughs> I love. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyway, right, who sorry, do you got, who do you got Kurt? No, no, it's yet. okay. It's okay. Who do you um, got, bud? Well, I wasn't going to go with him, but I kind of like your pick. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, yeah. I originally was going to go with um, just uh, for all purposes was the first cop that was telling the kid, like, mind your business. I don't care. Oh, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, but again, that was just, I think those were intentional yeah. to show, like, hey, the cops here, don't they have so much But again, do. there's not that's enough, not so I was just trying right. to, th- it was like a throwaway, and but I, I, was. I like your idea. Okay. Right, so I'm I was going with, with Bob, him. I was a no pick, but I know that pisses James off, so I'm going to take James's <laughs> pick. My, uh, well, I was very upset by who John Dozier picked well, who did, who for the trash can full of dirt. He gave it to Austin O'Brien as Danny Manigan. What? Oh. He said this was an easy pick. The grenade knife kid acted better in one seed than Danny did in the entire movie. <laughs> he said, I pictured him as a trash can full of dirt for pretty much the whole movie and was like, yep, that fits. I don't think that's fair. Now, there was plenty of times where he's annoying, yeah. but he's also a 12-year-old. Like, hang around some middle schoolers, okay? Like, this yeah, is, for a while. This is Being what an adult. They're like. But I thought there was plenty of scenes with some serious stuff going on. Bob looks like he's feeling attacked over there at that. No, <laughs> there's some, there's some scenes going on where there's some serious things going on with this kid that he acted very well. I thought, yeah, like that ending scene when he was trying to stay with them, but he had to go back to the real yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I respect your pick, uh, Mr. Dozier. You're just, you know, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Mr. Dozier. No, no, he is one of our patreons. We I don't say you. that stuff about those guys. I was making a joke. I okay, was out of joking. I love this guy. All right, our top three picks for who is your favorite performers in the movie not necessarily who's best but who are your favorite clint do you want to go go around this way this time bob's arnold on bob's on time out number one <laughs> my favorite because arnold. Arnold. it's arnie yeah come on um, we're gonna go with benedict as our number two there is no disputing those two you can flop your orders all you want but sure. those two are going to be everybody's one or two or i'm an idiot <laughs> i am an idiot anyway even if it goes out no i hear you um but i'm gonna go off book with three because you know whatever yeah. The soundtrack, man. My okay. God, was that good. It was a great it was just, soundtrack. It was really good. ACDC gets your third spot. Yes. Okay, fair enough. How about for you, Kurt? Um, I went with Arnie for number one only because, obviously, the movie is about him yeah. in a sense. I also feel like to be able to do what he did and make fun of himself. Right. And the way that he knew how without it being tacky. Right. I enjoyed. Um, number two, I also picked Benedict. Yeah, Charles uh, I thought he was really great as a villain. Mm-hmm. And number three, I really like the Ripper. The Ripper yeah. I yeah. wish I Unit saw awesome. a movie with that guy as a villain as well. Yeah, I, I want to see Jack Slater three. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, sure. Newton was cool. I just For sure. feel like like that's like a Batman rogue kind of thing. Yeah, you know, like the Ripper, Benedict. You know, I just feel like it would be cool to see. For sure, the bad guys that come out of the Slater films. For sure, I I, I remember years ago thinking that as I was watching this movie, going, "Man, the tragedy here is that we don't have." Slater one through four for real. Yeah. Like those would be hilarious, great action movies, I'm assuming. Yeah, no, absolutely. Am I ungrounded? Yeah. Oh, you're good. Okay. Now you're right. now you're off so you're off punishment. Okay, I'm off punishment. So <laughs> I got a couple of things. So um first my top three. Arnold yes. is number one for yeah. obvious reasons. And he's also my hot man rain award winner. Oh, that's that? right. Oh, so yeah. for Bob, hold on, but don't just throw that out there because I got to explain it because we haven't done this. Sure, yet. go ahead. I apologize. So Bob, after the Wraith episode, whenever he's on now, he's going to give out the hot chick award. Yep. Which is, is named after no, the Sherilyn. It's, it's called the Sherilyn Fan Award. It's called. The I Sher- would say the Bob's Babe Award for me would go to definitely for. Well, it's got to. It's going uh, for Sherilyn Fenn. It's uh, because it's named it, after Sherilyn Fenn yeah. from the Wraith because she was uh, just. Gorgeous. So it's called the Cheryl Fenn Hot Babe Award. All right. <laughs> and then the Hot Guy Award is James picked the name for this was called the Rain Award from because of the guy from Ninja Assassin. Because of Ninja Assassin, he had the most beautiful body. <laughs> now, <laughs> I said, Bob, the only way I'm going to let you give a Hot Chick Award is if you also talk about the hottest dude. That's fine. I'm okay. cool with that. So. so talk about Schwarzenegger. Why do you think he's hot? Look at him. <laughs> 
Just look at it. Well, 1994 Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't look at him now and go, man, he was. <laughs> no, uh, he's fine. He's still I, fine. He's still got the wild. That's crazy. definitely like Mr. His, Universe. <laughs> like that guy's, his hair permanently is just yes. in that hairstyle. Like now. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a good looking dude. Like, look right. at him. He's Mister. He's uh, Mister. Oh my God, Olympia. No, yeah, Mister Olympia. And uh, what was that? Was that Mr. it? Mister Universe. Mister Universe. Thank you. Wow. That, I believe so. I just All right. Said so that. who wins the Sherilyn Fenn Award? Because not a lot of options in this movie. Everyone <laughs> at Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> Close. I'm gonna go with Mercedes Rule, Mrs. Madigan. Mrs. Madigan. Love those mom bangs. Sonya Blade was in this movie. Yeah, yeah that's where was. my that's where my Bob's Babe Award went my to. Sherlo- you? My Sherlock fan hot babe award goes to Mercedes Rule. You Mrs. thought Madigan. you thought Mrs. Madigan was hotter than yes? Than no. She was good looking. Sonya no Blade, way. scrambled eggs. Then man. Veronica Vaughn. That yeah. Veronica Vaughn is one hot piece of <laughs> eggs, yep. dude. Yep. I'm messing with you. It's Bridget Wilson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had you. I had you. Okay. I was like, uh, bro, that's nuts. All right, who's your top three, though? Come on. Give me all right, so three. my top three is Schwarzenegger for number one. Yeah. Frank McRae for Lieutenant Decker, number two. And Ooh. then Charles Dance for number three. Okay, all right. But you still got him in your top three, but you put Decker in there. I appreciate that. So for me, I had Arnold at number one and Charles Dance as Benedict at number two. Bob's an idiot. But... <laughs> That is true, sir. That I is had, true. I had Robert Prosky as number three. I really like Nick, the, the projector. Yeah. I thought he gave a great performance. Yeah. The boss from Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah, well, and the uh, and the guy from Gremlins 2, the vampire oh, news yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought he gave a great performance, and there was a couple of really heartfelt moments when he said, you know, he worked his way up from a projectionist, and it's still showbiz. You know, like, you know, you can tell like the melancholy and yeah. the guy's life and all that stuff. And I just thought it was really, really good. And he didn't want to give, you know, Danny a bath with any weird midget. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here's what Mr. John Paul that. Dozier just said. They didn't say it in the movie. You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uncut version. <laughs> Dozier gave his top three and he said, Arnold is number one. Then he had Robert Prosky as Nick number two. Oh, and Ian McKellen is number three as death. And he included a whole paragraph about why he didn't pick Benedict. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, no. Keep, I got something about death and uh, little things. Yes. Portion. So he said, here's why no, no Charles Dance. I felt that he was coasting with his character through the entire movie. He has been great in so many movies, but with this one, it felt like he was lacking. He wasn't bad, but he just wasn't great either. Like you just rang it in? Mm. Uh, like you just phoned it in to go ahead and make a, a yeah, buck. Yeah, which I just I don't think is it. so not. That's not true. True at all. I think he was definitely at that beginning in the pool scene. He was playing uh, aloof assassin, right? So you know this that I think that's what he was doing because he has to deal with Vivaldi. Yeah. and he's over it. Yeah, right. I don't think that was a mistake. I think that's what the, to show the arc. You know, yeah, to, he says Surrey McKellen as death has one minute on screen that was more believable. As his character, he says, Hal, Danny DeVito, who voiced Whiskers, played their character better than Charles Dance did in this uh, movie. I'll I'll like, to yeah, you're going a little that. hard in the paint. I there. don't know that we necessarily needed death in the movie, to be honest with you. No. No. I mean, to no. make the story. I, he could have came to the realization on his own that the ticket was in. Yeah. Right. The other half of the ticket was in the thing. So yeah. I don't know. I but had, those were his picks. What yeah. was your thing about my, death? My little thing here with yeah. death. Um, like legitimately, I had just watched some Bill and Ted and it reminded me yes. of all of it. So when death showed up, I was just waiting for him to throw out some sick bass riffs. <laughs> a 45 minute bass solo. <laughs> if, it, if it had been Bill Sadler, <laughs> this movie would have, would have been even better. <laughs> all right, guys. So we're getting way over on time here. So we got to ask the question as we always do. Was this uh, a bad movie that's just full stop bad? Is it a bad movie that rules or is it legitimately a good movie? What do you guys think? I'll start with you and go around. I think it's a legitimate good movie, but it's misunderstood. Very. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. So. How about for you, Kurt? On that, I would say it's just below that. Okay. So I would still call it a bad movie that rules. Okay. Awesome. I think this is a good movie. I know it didn't tick the boxes and make money, yeah. make everybody happy in the world. I think this is actually a good movie. Um, so, yeah, yeah, good movie. Good. I'm, I'm going to agree and say it's a straight-up good movie for me personally because – and I don't, this is going to sound because I get it and other people don't like, no, but because of how much we talk about and dig into these movies and we know we discuss these tropes and a lot of time it's, it's, we can see the layers in it. Right. And I think 
there are a lot of other people out there that can also see the layers in it, not like we're special. But I think a lot of casual moviegoers probably aren't thinking that hard about it and misunderstood the movie for that right. for that reason. So for me, that's why I think it's a great movie. All right. Now, would Arnold make this movie better? That's the other question that oh, we have to I mean, ask. Do we Another really one. have to ask? <laughs> like it's a movie inside of a movie inside of a movie? The, this, que- the question you should ask yourself, would Bruce Willis make this movie better? No. <laughs> I think I think it would, he would. Yes, of course he would. I think if we did it now, yeah, and he went as old Schwarzenegger, yeah, back into a young Schwarzenegger movie, into an uh, yeah, into a young that Schwarzenegger cool. movie. I think that would be kind of fun. That play, would be fun too. But as long as fun. it was done right, to play off your idea, if old Schwarzenegger went into a Dwayne Johnson movie, <laughs> well, he kind of so did that with a, the rundown, didn't he? He did for a minute, for a hot second, for a hot second. Yeah, so look, we had Arnold in this movie already, right? So sure. I realize that, and Would then that wasn't enough worse without Arnold, <laughs> and that wasn't <laughs> enough. They had a, they added a second Arnold into this right, movie, and right. so I guess the question is: is would a third Arnold make this movie better? Sure, it, right? Yeah, it has it, to. It has well, to. Then I think I kind of answered that. So <laughs> we took old Arnold and dropped him into last into action this hero. hero. It's absolutely better. But did like the whole Terminator vibe where he has right. to go back and tell his younger self. That Jack Slater is going to save the world. Yes. Yeah. Or if they had just had the idea to have, since he was going to recruiting bad guys out of movies, if they had gone and recruited good guys. Other oh, Arnolds. And because he was young enough at the time, he could have came in as Terminator or as any of these Conan. other characters. Conan. Oh, sure. That would have been awesome too, right? And it would have been a, and the a face-off. And then the DeLorean went back in time. And grabbed all three Arnolds. Da, 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 da. Marty McFly teams up with Conan, the Terminator, and you Jack imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger as Doc Brown. Oh my God! Great <laughs> Scott! <laughs> my all right, God. so thank you guys for joining us. Next week we are going to be talking. <laughs> <laughs> next week, next week we're going to be talking about the Ice Pirates. Uh, which is a movie that's been requested multiple times by people. I know exactly zero about it, except that they're pirates and there's and ice. they need some ice. <laughs> that's about all I know. And some ch- hairy chest hair. And I've are seen they, some pictures, and it looks terrible. Are they pirates near ice, or are they pirates made of ice? No, I think they're pirates that are like somebody. Like I, I remember, ice. right? There's like a princess that needs them to go steal ice for them. The planet doesn't have ice. Oh. You know about it then. It doesn't need water. It's like a water world scenario, but gotcha. opposite. There's they no don't water. don't have water at all. Land world. Right. So Land they go to world. other planets and steal ice. <laughs> Dirt world. Water world. <laughs> and, uh, be yeah. For my new yeah. So that's why they're ice pirates. Okay, it makes sense. So right. join us next week for that riveting uh, look at the ice pirates. And uh, in the meantime, just thank you. If you haven't yet already, jump on our uh, Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash bad movies rule. You can email the show at this show is trash at gmail.com or you can join us on Patreon. There's all kinds of stuff to see and do on there and some cool people to interact with and chat with. Uh, in the meantime, on behalf of Clint Bush and Kurt Mummer and Bob Hauser, I'm James Hauser. We want to thank you for listening. Untrope. <laughs> <laughs>